And we're back, motherfuckers. It's time. Episode 144, y'all. Episode 144. I'm here with Jose Lopez. Limitless Lopez. And if you don't know, this is one of those episodes you're going to want to fucking catch a nut up. Because it's going to be one you want to keep. You ain't releasing this one. Episode 144, we got, uh, we got a special one, man. I feel like everyone is, is kind of... It's kind of special in its own way, you know, and I think, you know, when, you know, you were kind of sharing with me some of the, some of the just great things you've been doing, you know, it's kind of just changing people's days, changing people's, you know, like weeks, changing people's, you know, their their mindset, you know, whether it's, you know, giving a candle away, giving a, you know, a Christmas ornament away or, you know, having a bite given to you. What is the movement you're really bringing? I mean... I've had a humble bringing all my life, day one, coming from where I come from, New York. And we're going to get to that. We're going to get there. But uh, this movie is just being good to all people, man. I've had a lot of go-arounds, learning different things from all next to the woods. And I want, I want to keep showing people that you can give in anything you can, zero expense to your life, but it's going to make you feel better at the end of the day because you're giving it with it genuine wholeheartedness and expecting nothing in return and i've been doing just that and it's come full 360 people have given return when i didn't need it in return but i see that people are the same way at the end of the day it's it's beautiful man like i see uh you know just like these big accounts they're they're doing it you know whether it's and it's not even on the same level that you're doing you're kind of giving it more of a you're giving it more of a local but more of like a personalized you know it's you see a lot of people that you know they go into walmart and they ask them if you know if they have a dollar or something that don't, Absolutely. and they fucking end up giving them something, and it's big ass fucking you know TVs, or it's a big ass gift card, or the time you could buy you know everything in your fucking in your cart. Mm-hmm. You got sixty seconds to buy as much shit in your cart. Or, yep. You know you touch something, and you everything you touch in sixty seconds you pay for it. No, this is this is nothing like that because anything that I could pet, some things were passed to me that I passed forward to somebody else, whether it be a Christmas decoration and ornament. 90% of the ornaments on my tree were given to me by somebody else, my coworkers, And here I am, just passing them along, making somebody's day just by writing on them. Giving a decoration to somebody that they didn't have in their home, that they're going to hang them, at, they hang them in their new homes. You know? All I was passing forward something that I didn't essentially need, but I liked it. I was a nice gift from somebody else, but somebody else could have needed that at the end of the day. That's deep. You ever, you, have you ever been a part of like, going through like a drive through and you'll have like, hey, you know, I'm gonna pay for the order behind me. Um, not me personally, but I know that a lot of people have done it because of my work experience from fast food to restaurants and all that stuff. Like I've seen people do that all the time, pay somebody else's bill because they they had multiple kids and they're eating by themselves and somebody just walks over and it's like, here, I got, I got your bill good. I like that you got, you're taking care of your kids. Have a good day. I've seen that. Whether it be somebody coming to the drive through getting a coffee. Hey, I noticed they got a car full of kids or they're just sound like they're having a bad day back there. I'd like to pay for their order. I've seen it all. I really so, have. With having such a, you know, with, with you know, some of the stuff we're gonna talk about, you know, growing up and shit, mm-hmm. how do you how do you stay so so positive and you know and have this light worker mindset around it's, you? It's really humbling because I, I wasn't always like this. I used to be a very like agitated, irritated person doubted everybody, doubted myself a lot, just doubted like the world around me because I seen a lot of negative around me and I fought through it all. Like I really struggled with it. I had negative friends. I had positive friends. Some of those friends are here today still with me. Some of them are just in in my shadow or just some of them I don't even know what's going on with them, but I wish everybody the best at the end of the day for that. But the reason I stay positive is because like you only, that's only what we can do. There's a lot of negative going on in the world right now it always has been from my age anyway i've seen a lot of it oh yeah. 28 28 good oh. number to have good number to have 28 um i've seen it a lot of it from state to state area to area town to town like you come across people of all streaks whether it be good negative positive neutral you know yeah that's it but that's how i say positive because i've seen it all already it's kind of crazy because i've seen it in a short time but I had to gain my own positive. I had to build my own positivity, keeping it at that level. Like nobody can change my attitude, my mindset. Nobody can change what I'm doing. Do you re- do you remember like a, a turning point that was just like, 
okay, this is, I'm tired of having enough. I'm tired of fucking, you know. Oh, the turning point. That's a, that's, that's a good thing you asked that, man. Because the turning point was really having a child, being a dad, coming from a different area, been to multiple different states, but the turning point was really when I, I had a mental break, basically. I literally tore myself down so far to where my mind went blank and I was completely exhausted to where I'm like, I, I need to change something about this. I need to change something about why I'm thinking like this. Basically let it all out by myself because I have had over the years so much time by myself. Didn't have anybody really to talk to. Didn't have the, the stride that anybody wants to like, hey, what's wrong, man? I didn't have that. I spent so many times and so many hours, so many nights by myself with my own thoughts and I know how to silence my thoughts now silence my voices silence my demons they're all gone hide them from the world they don't even know they don't even exist they the don't world, exist that world doesn't even know they exist because they're in my head and I silenced that I just last night I sat in my room listening to my music but at one point it was quiet the whole world was quiet to me do you ever do you ever feel like when you hide these demons and hide, hide you know get them you know try to keep them hidden? Do you ever feel like it, it boils up and you know? No, I, I get anxious, but I taught I I learned that that now that I get anxious, it's a good anxiety because I used to shake a lot. I used to like really just like not know how to handle it. Like I used to get really like frightened. I get my stomach would get weak, all kind of like butterflies, all kinds of like room spinning, nausea, right? But now that I keep it at a positive rate and silence it all and keep it cut out, like, it's only as far as you can bring your mindset to it, man. Like, if you really think about it, when you silence all that and keep it closed out, you, you basically build up a door, a very strong door right. with yourself. Knowing yourself where your limits lie as far as your mindset and where you, what triggers you. Right. Triggers are a big part of it. And I think I have learned not to enable people to trigger me. Kind of block that shit out. Just block it all out, man. That's, that's all you can do. I mean, you see it, but you don't, you gotta react on it. Yeah. So, there's that, for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely can't react to the triggers. I know, uh, time and time again, you know, my, my, uh, you know, anger at times, you know, it's gotten the best to me where I'm like, absolutely. damn, dude, I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta calm the fuck down. I'm sure you have the same too. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm out, uh, I'm really good at, uh, like you, you sound like you've got a pretty healthy cap with your like with your emotions. For me, I feel like I bottle things up unhealthily. I, I, did, I used to do that. A lot. And then so then like I'm just I don't I don't let anybody know when anything bugs me. And then it gets to a point where it'll take one like the final straw that breaks the camel back yep. or whatever. You know, like yep. the last little icing on the cake, yep. bro. And I'm losing my shit over something that makes no sense when it's really everything else. You know. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's, that's that's true, man. That's brass facts. Like yeah. you can't always let your emotions sit with you because you act on emotion you act irrationally yeah now you act on positive emotion you could have a, a possible neutral or negative or positive outcome just because it just depends on who, what's your perception of who's you're giving that kind of emotion to and that's how i look at it like you what you put out what you bring into yourself and on others you know just depends on what kind of sponge you are Right. Just it really depends on how, what kind of sponge you are. I like that. It depends on what kind of sponge you are. That's actually a really cool phrase. That's yeah, cool. They, <laughs> they say these kids are really like sponges too. You know, yeah. Like they they soak that, that shit up. See monkey do for yeah. real. And that's what I learned. I learned that working out of school, man. Kids, kids are just like adults. You just gotta find what flavor you are, what kind of style of kid you are, because right. we're all kids at heart. Right. Definitely feel that. Well, kids are. Speaking of kids, you know, having having your first kid, you know, how do you, how do you think, you make it, as easy as you do with with because you didn't have your dad around. No, um, being being the situation with my kid and everything, it's like we like we spoke on. Um, she's a blessing to me. She reminds me a lot of myself as I was a kid. She reminds me a lot of my sisters as a kid, because I have three sisters, one older, two younger. We were all born simultaneously within years of each other, 93, 94, 95, 96. Um, sweet, but she's a blessing. I don't have any troubles with her. I, I worry about her constantly just because of the situation sometimes, but she- We worry she's safe, that's... She's safeguarded as far as I can tell. She's always taken care of. She's taken care of by me all the time, but 
My kid does no wrong. She gets what, what anything that she asks for, she gets. Not spoiling, yeah. but she's not a bad kid. She's a little princess too. She's a little princess. She's my angel. Yeah. A blessing to this earth. You know, she came. She's a part of me. She's my only real blood child. Like any, like I got, I got kids that are my friends' kids that I've helped bring up, change their diapers, raise, raise any kid. This is my own. Right. You know, I'm working out of school and everything. Like you look at a lot of these parents. I've grown up and known some of them, and I've known their kids. They know my daughter now. And it is your point of view and how you are as a parent, like keeping a positive head on your shoulders so your kid can stay positive. So your kid, you can always put a smile on her face, you know, whether it be boy, girl, you know. Keeping the, your kids happy is definitely a part of how what keeps you happy. Oh, facts. Yeah, seeing that her play, seeing that she wants to color, seeing that's it. She always wants a hug from dad, watch cartoons with dad, you know. My uh, boss stated to me one time, which uh, she's a great mentor to me, you know, you'll, you'll hear her name eventually. But uh, she told me, uh, since she has kids as well, she told me a daughter will always want the attention of her father because it's more or less like that fact that she, dad, I wanna see you. Dad, I wanna be seen by you. Dad, I wanna do this with you. I wanna, I wanna have that time with you. At first, I didn't have that time with my daughter and I missed a, a, a little snippet of her life and now that I have that opportunity to be really raising my daughter and being her dad and showing her everything that I, I do. She comes fishing with me. She she does not eat fish yet, but she colors. I like the color. She, she loves that I sing to her. She listens to the same, she, she vibes to the little music that I play. She's scared to eat it though, the fish. She, 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 doesn't, she doesn't know what it is yet. Yeah. She's so I was, she's No, it's funny because like, I didn't like, I didn't even try fish till I was older because it was just, um, as would, a kid, I feel like. Are you, are you filleting it? Are you getting uh, it proper? Yeah, yeah. Are you getting bro, it a little, you know, process, frying it so you I got process, some fish nuggets? Or? I process all my own. I catch yeah. all my own. I process it. I clean it. I, you know, I watch, cut it she, has she watched that process? Yeah, she's watched Scarred. it. Scarred. Scarred. Oh, I was six yeah. years old. This I was, is a happy I was like fish, five, I was like five or six years old. My mom had this friend uh, who like skinned and gutted a deer in our front yard. And I watched him do the whole process at five years old and just was standing there watching him. And apparently I wasn't really too fucked up by it. I still ate the deer and everything. Yeah. Right. But yeah, no, like shit, stuff like that. Um, he was an alpha. But, but, but fish, for some reason, fish was weird yeah. for me as a kid. Yeah. See, like catching fish. Like I would catch See, I remember them. getting stabbed by like, like the gills, gills oh, okay. all the time. Oh, I'm like, those are called gill plates. Well, nobody tells oh. you about that shit. No, nobody does. Nobody, nobody, does, nobody. You know, yeah. nobody tells you to grab by the head and, and curve it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're the fish you guys are referring to? As, I'm just like, that's everybody's it's a bass. Start, starting point. Well, you're probably bluegill, perch, and bass. That's everybody's number one Mich like Michigan as starting point as far mm -hmm. as fishing. Even me, that's where I started for mm -hmm. from um, with my grandparents. Taking us camping all the time. There was a local place in New York where, where I'm from and everything. So they took us camping every year and it was a private campground. You, you just set up like you do here in Michigan, pay your pay what you need to do for the camping weekend. And I had a, a stock lake. Well, this lake was actually a brackish water, like meaning salt water and fresh water mix. And which mm -hmm. we allowed fish now y'all know to go to brackish. It yeah, never well, that. it's because it had it was man made, but they had a, like an inlet of fresh water kind okay. of creek kind of deal. But what ha happens with bra brackish water fish? They grow to a normal size as opposed to fucking your, huge your standard standard fresh water, standard salt water. You know, you mix them together, it what we call a jumbo. I like, like that. Fucking yeah. weird, weird freaks of nature. That's how you got really. these goldfish that are fucking twelve feet long. It, it's all about right place, right time and right um, domain, like where they mm -hmm. linger, where they eat, where they feed, where they spawn. Mm -hmm. You get these fish that get into these cycles of, oh, I'm, I'm the badass in the bush. You're, nobody's gonna eat me until you get Mr. Snapping Turtle. Alligator Snapping mm -hmm. Turtles were the worst. It, it God, was. yes. Yeah, we had those in that pond, but uh, crazy enough about that, that campground, that pond, it was fucking less than a 20 minute drive from Hampton Bays. Hampton, yeah. Hampton's New York on Long Island. I've been there before, that was, that was the best part. We go to the Hampton uh, movie theater we go see a new movie every every camping season because back then, movie theaters were a big hit as you were growing up. Oh yeah, yeah they really was the shit. And like that's what I, it was like saying like memories with my grandparents, my grandfather, and my and my grandmother. They always like wanted us to have fishing poles. Like my uh, my my father, my stepfather, he took me and my sisters out fishing on the ocean, and 
I got pictures of me holding my first flounder, my first ever saltwater fish on a deep sea boat. Flounder, that's like a big fat one? No, that's not, they're flat. They're the flat skinny ones. There's flounders and flukes, and then there's halibut. What's that big fat motherfuckers? The gropers. Groupers. Right, Goliath groupers. You're Don't talking about them giants? I've seen one of those at uh, an aquarium in Tampa. Yeah, and that shit groupers. was the biggest, like, if you guys ever, like, get a chance to, like, go to aquariums, check out Tampa. This motherfucker is huge. Giant it's, like, groupers. the biggest one in, the, in like, the, in the world. They get over, they get over. Or in the, in the, in the, in the states. The adults <coughs> that are of size, they get over, like, 1,200 pounds. God damn. Yeah, they're, they're huge. huge. They use giant. It's like a whole boat. They use giant steel alloy hooks for them with giant chunks of fish with over a hundred pound steel wire fishing shit with a giant bale. And you literally have to grab the line and crank and crank just to get it up. But these fish are, you have to be careful because of how their size is and how bare, uh, is it pressure in the water? Mm -hmm. This happens in our rivers, lakes and everything. If you reel a fish out of so much feet of water, it can barrel trauma, meaning it will literally vomit up its air bladder. Now, if that's when that happens, you have about 30 seconds to a couple minutes to get that fish back in the water, back to the depth that you pulled it out of, so it doesn't die. Now, with that, ocean fishing, that's a whole, that's something I grew up doing. Say, you that, got, say that word again. So you got barrel a, trauma. Barrel trauma, so folks. Bar Make sure barrel, you go do your research like and check it. Trauma. Barometric trauma. Yeah, so you gotta pull them up at like a slower Our rate. Our slow rate. That we do that so here. We even do that here in Saginaw River. River. That makes sense. That's crazy. We do that here in Saginaw River, depending on what depth we're fishing in. We do it out on the bay. People, you just gotta slow and steady sometimes because certain fish are not as um, resilient to it as other fish, especially the size. A big fish can get very harmed from doing something like that. That's mm -hmm. why. Anybody use that you guys have seen that I've I've made myself or whatever as far as me fishing, you'll notice that I take my time. There are some, and you'll, if I don't take my time where I'm just cranking and cranking on that fish, torquing it, you'll notice that I break the line or my lure will pop out of its mouth and come flying and damn hit, hit me in the face. I got videos of that stuff too. But like all the natural of just me fishing and shit like that, like from saltwater to freshwater to brackish, like it all ties in together just from home because that's where my I was always surrounded by water. I came to Michigan when I was 14, in my junior year in high school, I would say. It was right after my sophomore year. My stepdad pretty much sent for me after I spent the nine miserable months in Oklahoma. But as far as New York goes, that was like a big tie. That's my tie to life. Like, How long were you in uh, New York for? From 1994 until So this is when you were born. Yeah, when I was born and... Till you were what? Till I was a uh, sophomore in high school. 12, 13? No. 12, 13, yeah. Oh, no. It, no, it would have been like 14, 15. 14. 15. Yeah, because I, I was a junior when I moved to Michigan. Mm. I spent my sophomore year in Oklahoma. But New York is where my family lies. We're all separated from there now, except my older sister and my grandparents just, just moved out of New York to go live in Georgia. But as far as, like, having that background coming from a whole... that. You hear New York. That's that's the biggest. You right. hear every, you hear New York around the whole country. What age did you start fishing? Was it when you were at the camp? I was a kid. I was a kid. Yeah, I was a little kid learning everything I can. Just fishing with little worms and hooks, catching perch, catching bluegill, and then saltwater fishing was a different, different, same. But I used to do crab and I used to do lobster. Oh, can't those, trap in. The, the crustaceans freak me the fuck out, dude. Oh, dude. The weirdest shit to me is uh, uh, what the fuck are those things? So is it a horseshoe crab? Oh yeah, with the, with the foot and a half spider okay. that right. sits and they bury themselves in the sand. That shit yeah. sticks straight up. Yeah, okay. Fuck Did you know that, that is their <laughs> that fuck is actually that. their defense mechanism. The yeah. only reason they do that is during um just to hide. But you want to know a fun? We'll go a little, a little fun fact about fishing because I do know about horseshoe crabs. I actually thought that was the coolest shit at one point. Dude, oh. Males and females, <laughs> you can tell just by flipping them over whether they're a male or a female because most people would have noticed this. They have a, like a shape, this V shape, and for a vagina. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's more like a female had like a breast, like a breast plate, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they also hold their eggs. Double D's. <laughs> double D's on the crab. Uh, but and then the males would just have all these freaking pincers and shit like crazy look it would just look like yeah no okay so the one I seen was a male yeah like, dude, sure. it was just because he he did bro he was this dude was fishing off the pier at uh, yeah. Myrtle Beach yep and uh 
he, he pulls this shit up. He goes, oh my God, it's a horseshoe crab. As I was like in two, three, four you hours know, ago. are actually in their shell up here? Yeah, up top. Up on top. the top of their skull, bro. Yeah. Like a tank, bro. And you eat it. You eat it. I've never ate a horseshoe oh, crab no, before. Dude, but you, I've ate regular crabs. I've ate shrimp and lobster. But that was like a big part of my growing up. Like as far as my uncle, um, she lived down the road. She? From, what? Yeah. She was in the military. She was very... You said uncle. Yeah. It was your aunt? I have a aunt. My aunt was my uncle. See, yeah, that's funny because I have an aunt, Kevin. I have a, she, What? We call her Uncle Momo. Hold up. Back up. <laughs> what? Uncle Momo. Her so, name is Maureen. Okay. It's Uncle Momo. And so, so she's your uncle? She was very decorated in the military. Let's put it that way. Okay. Let's put it that so way. So she, she was just manly? Yeah. But she wasn't a dude? No. Okay, so... Yeah, I knew I grew up. Fuck no! What? That's how I knew. I seriously I grew up knowing Aunt Shell. Aunt Momo or Uncle Momo. Uncle Chelsea. But, uh. Well, yeah, my Uncle Kevin. I had cousins and everything. But, uh. With that. It's fucked up. We went. She taught us how to crab fish off of harbor walls with chicken legs. You tie a big old sturdy rope to a chicken leg off the side of the harbor wall and drop that down there. Go up back to the house, have dinner, have lunch, whatever you're doing for the day. You go back in a couple hours, check them chicken legs, and just the slowest she rolls, you pull that chicken leg up, and water's clear. You can see down forty feet, depending on you know how how the weather is or whatever. What's well, what's gonna around. what's gonna be sucking on it? Dude, they're, no, the crabs hold on they to it. They stay on it. They hold. You just gotta do it slow. If they notice you're pulling it up too fast, they'll the jump drop off. off. Dude, if you even if you pull up the leg right out of the water too quick, choop, they're gone. You just lost the nice crab. Dog, in the, the the fucking the, on the horseshoe crab, the spikes like a, like a ruler or sometimes two rulers dude, on them, bro. It's so depending like, on their age, just, yeah, yeah. Depending on their age, dude. And it's big. huge. It's just it just and it it doesn't like it only moves in like at the base. So it's just this huge spike going up and down. Yeah. So let me ask y'all, what do you think would be scarier, the undiscovered like space or the undiscovered water? undiscovered water? Because the space is so vast. Yeah, we don't know what's really out there. But guess what? The earth is made of, up of more water than land, bro, and we're still... They just... I just seen this the other day, and you guys are going to love this one. Uh, about probably like eight, nine years ago, we discovered the what they called the frilled, frilled shark, which is like an eel shark, what they called it. It was in Japan, thought to be extinct. Just the other day, now fast forward till now, they found a living fossil of the Dunkelsaurus. The fuck is that? Something like Harry Potter. Y'all want to know what the Dunkelsaurus is? Yeah, that's Dunkelosaurus. Harry Potter shit. A Pokemon shit. He said but they, they say They say we know more about space than our oceans. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because our oceans are so tetraform. They're so vast. There's different topographies. They there's so much there's more changed. per square you, inch. You don't even know that... We don't even know what happens under the ocean because it's always changing. You've seen the Will Smith, uh, Will Smith on National Geographic, right, where he kind of like breaks no. into the ocean. No, I've seen. You after go that. like it. You go like it. The uh, motherfuckers be communicating with their see lights. The dunkles, the, the dunkles dunkles water. Waters, they just found a living one. What the hell? One of the craziest living fossils ever. And I'm pretty sure that's what I've seen. I'm not. Don't uh, quote me, people. A Dunkelsaurus. That is a real thing. Oh, we don't, sure. <laughs> don't quote me, people, but we they found one alive. Oh, wow. But they found they got said, it. He said, "Do not quote me." But yeah, this no. is what happened. Yeah, the water <laughs> terrifies me. The ocean terrifies but, me. But like, yeah. I've always been interested in sharks. I've always been interested in sea the water. You right? would swim with sharks, dude. I Mastic Beach, New York, Smith Point Beach, Montauk Point. I've all I swam there, people. They had a, I used to go out on the sandbar, um, right out of. Smith Point Beach right there on Long Island. And that beach has, holds memories for me and my family. Like We used to go there every summer. My older sister still takes her kids there. Me and my friends used to go there all the time. Like I used to fish out there and everything, catching snappers and amberjacks and all that stuff. I wish I would have known more now than, well, I mean then, as far as fishing goes, as far as saltwater, because I know more freshwater fishing than saltwater now, but I watch... All kinds of YouTube. I'm right. very indulged in the social media YouTube game as far as what YouTubers do, what Instagram people do, what the podcast people do, like all that kind of stuff. Like I follow so many social media platforms as far as fishing goes that the sky's the limit with my fishing game, man. I have so much intel. The people I know from local to non-local to other states, 
Like I've fished in every state that I've every lived, state that I've lived in personally. Oh, about to say, oh, there's fifty of them boys. You no. been to Alaska? Jesus, that's no. the best fishing of the hey, world. Bucket trip, bro. Bucket hey, trip. That's that's the bucket, bucket list. trip. That's the bucket list. Alaska, Kenai River, salmon fishing, chum It's salmon, not crazy hard to go to Alaska. No, it's you can, not. You can actually like charter yeah. down there while yeah, you're exactly. money. People make people come back from Michigan and go charter out there for the season. And make the bank. And make Wait, banks what for the what? season. Yeah, my man. Charter uh, fishing, bro. It's the number one way to make fishing industry your life. Lead. I was like a I was like a sophomore or junior in school, and this dude Nate Bremer fucking goes to Alaska and yep. is like chartering on a motherfucker comes back, bank, you know, just bank make a bank. And I was like, what the fuck? And I'm thinking like. That should be like that's like a bucket list for a lot of fucking fishermen, you know. Like, oh, dude, I, I want to go to Alaska, you know, like salmon fish or whatever the fuck you, they do out there. It's just I feel like you can do it everything. You can do everything. Yep. Kill a moose, kill a bear, fucking. No, they, they, so, okay, that's great thing you you were talking about Alaska because this is ties into what a lot of like what I do in fishing now with the people I know. Yeah. You know, walleye being number one, y'all see the flag. That's probably your biggest main contributor to the seasons because you can catch a wall year round in, in the Great Lakes and, and Saginaw Rivers, tributaries, Saginaw Bay tributaries, all that kind of stuff. And Lake Huron, all over the state, Lake Erie, Lake Superior, there's walleye, perch, and all of them. But that's what I mainly do. I fish for those, I eat those, I that's where my, my roots really go to right now. But as far as chartering, I know people in that game it's great that I know people in that game. I've learned a lot of knowledge from those people. And now, now that we're on that kind of basis on that one. And I've actually come to know charter captains, deck hands, whatever. A good friend of mine is, just got his LLC for his charter company. Salute to him, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, salute board. to you. You know, it's going to, it's going to, he's going to, we're not going to put out no names yet, but I'm going to be helping him for sure with that. He know, already knows that we've been friends for, I met him fishing the river, bro, just like what I was telling you. He didn't even know me from a fucking door and nail on the wall. And he gave me a jig head. He gave me a plastic. Oh, you look like you know what you're doing, Jose. You just don't, I don't got a lot of gear right now. Here, take one. First cast or second cast. Boom. I pop a walleye. He's like, fuck yeah, bro. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I knew I gave you that for a reason. I don't, I'm, I'm a novice. I was a novice still at walleye fishing. I was using a bait caster for bass. Jigging off the wall, trying to get my first one. Jigging is uh, a no term. Of explain, explain the thing. Jigging the is a term jigging. of cadence in which you bounce you, your whether it be finesse fishing, walleye fishing. Finesse ice, fishing. A lot of people are thinking, ice. "What? We don't want to get finesse while we fish." Explain. Finesse fishing is just how you get that that reluctant fish to bite. Like you're you're getting him, to, you're triggering that fish. Just you're teasing him. Teasing him. Exactly. Exactly what he says. Finesse. To get so bit. then what's jigging off the wall? What's jigging that? off the wall is basically me putting my lure right in front of my feet and just bouncing it off the bottom. Jigging is basically mainly a bottom contact sport. Another form of teasing them. Yeah, another form of teasing them, whether you put, put a plastic or live bait down there in front of their face. You're basically, 90% of what happens in the Saginaw River, Saginaw Bay, you don't get a lot of suspended fish is what we call it. You don't get them up in the water column. They're all right at the bottom. The layer at the, the bottom. They're the catfish, the walleye, the perch, the bluegills. They're all just hunkering down. And that's how we get a lot of our bites. Is that because it's the most comfortable the, uh, temperature? Um, no. What that is, is yes, thermocline. But it's, it's the being that the Saginaw River is always so stained. It's not a super clear river. Right. That, that's by bottom color. That's just by sediment. Yeah, it used to be. Everybody says, it's polluted. It's polluted. Don't eat shit out of there. I've been here 10 years fishing. I've been in Michigan for 14, but I've been fishing more, better part of like 10 years. I've watched that river clear up firsthand. And drop water levels, rise water levels. Most of you probably remember we just came off of a big high water. Yeah. Couldn't even walk down years, by vets. And four years. We had everywhere. high water for like three, four years. That's because Michigan was at its highest saturation point ever for our soil. And we just got a lot of rain. We got a lot of ice. I was on three foot of ice at one point a couple years back, driving cars out there and shit. Have but, you ever thought about being a meteorologist? No, I've been. He said the sediment in this lake is unacceptable. <laughs> But uh, no, that that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be meteorologists. Meteorologists do weather and shit like that. But I get where you're coming from, but you could do it all. I could do it all. But uh, I follow the weather. I follow the gradients and everything. The paths of why fish. W N M. Why fish go where? Where they have to reside? Why the colors of fish? Some you find fish that are blue sometimes. You find fish that are pale sometimes. You find fish that are all colored up. It's 
all by what they eat, where they reside, where their homes is, like their, their whether it be rock bottom, sediment bottom, muddy bottom, silty bottom, you know, all these different characteristics literally can change the fish color. Now you guys see black, black ass fish, don't eat those. Yeah. Just don't eat those. It's because they're lingering in, in the worst. What about if a fish is like white? Because I've seen like some fish that are like Pale, um, real, real white albino, fish. Albino, the albino part that is just like us, skin pigmentations. It's just a one a, a rare occurrence that happens in fish, just like us, or it's like animals. It happen, and we're not, they're not separated from any of that. This is skin pigmentation. It just happens in some fish species. Yeah. Like walleye, perch, sometimes we find blue ones because, or pale ones are just like really nice colored ones just because of it's healthy, just because of where it resided. Like you go out to the Saginaw River, my walleye are nice and gold and emerald, sometimes pale because they just came in from the clean bay. Or so the only are, color what not to eat is just is like a black fish? A, a really dark fish, meaning that it's just not a healthy fish mainly because like some, I've seen dark walleyes like that are really, they're supposed to be like a green back, gold back, whatever you want with a white, nice white belly. I've seen them. Pitch but black? Is I've that, seen them. Could black. that be like what they're around? Lingering in the dark. Lingering in the dark. They're, right. they're, they're bottom stationary. Coating it. Yeah, they're just basically lingering. They're not moving. That's their home. They like being that deep darkness. And I've seen them. I've seen them. <laughs> I've, seen, I've them. seen them. I've seen them. They're He's real seen, people. They're real people. I feel like I'm fucking listening. I'm like listening to the real version of like Finding Nemo and like what it was looking, <laughs> what it was based off of. And like it's They hide, man. They don't like to be seen. Yeah, anemone. 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 What do you think about uh, Finding Nemo and, and Finding Love Dory? It. Love it. Which one was better? Finding Nemo. Uh, because that, answer. okay, it's a good yeah. tale. You know, that actually happens with kids. It happens with people. People get lost. They don't really know the situation when you're a kid that just happened to I them. I feel like that little girl was so real with the braces. When she oh, my God. <laughs> that was so real. There's little That's, kids there's like, okay, just like, like that. Just like that. Are you sleeping? Ah. Yeah, just... Oh okay. Wait, look, he's a like, savage. The reason I, re I relate to Fire Nemo is because that happens in real life with people. Kids get lost. They don't know where their parents are at. Their parents are trying to find them. Like, that, that ties to just, like... We're not going to go big into that detail. Kid trafficking, human trafficking. Oh, my goodness. But, he said, fucking Pizza Gate opened the eyes to all of us. But, um... <laughs> We're not going to go big into that detail of that actually happening in life, obviously, because most of us do know if you're if you're acknowledgeable, enlightened enough that you know that 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 stuff happens. Kids get lost in adoption agencies. People get lost in just wherever, man. They don't know what to do in their life. They're trying to just take a good grasp and just like and find Nemo. That Nemo was lost. He found friends. He he was put in a cage. He was put in a bag. You cage yourself. You cage yourself as a child. You become very hostile, or you become very grateful and humble that that happened to you. Because I've been in that situation. I felt caged as a child many, many times. I felt like there was nothing I could do, nothing in my power. So I was angry. But Nemo, obviously, was resilient. He was steadfast. He trusted the people who was around him. Marlin tr trusted people who were around him, even though they didn't guide him the best. But he still had a guide in some shape or form. Marlin had some of the best guides, even though he was ignorant, he was regretful, he was doubtful of the, who was guiding him. He didn't trust. Are we people. really breaking down Finding fucking Nemo Finding Nemo this fuck. deep as fuck right now? Walt Disney, y'all need to fucking get this God motherfucker on the scriptwriter fucking God team, damn. and he need to get his ass on the fucking Finding Nemo God two uh, campaign. Just Finding keep, Nemo two, just keep right. swimming. Just Finding, keep swimming. Yeah, just that's already number three. That, that's what they already got. Finding D uh, I mean Dory, but I didn't. I didn't get deep into Finding Dory because I like I said I like Finding Nemo more. Dory's but, just off the perks or something. She's tripping, bro. She but, don't know hey, what's going Dory on. Dory was still a good friend to him. <laughs> You know, friend. you know one of my favorite movies that they dropped <coughs> is uh, Coco. I haven't watched it. Oh, sleep. Coco's gas. I like Moana. I like Moana a lot. Moana's my fire daughter too. loves Moana. My I love daughter the music in that Same movie. thing, but same time. Oh, people, a child yeah, is great. Remember a me. A princess. She was a princess on was that was trying to be get guided straight, but she had other duties to her people. She had other duties to her life. She needed to fulfill something that needed to be corrected. It's all ties of life, man. These people who wrote Disney movies, people that write movies, they try to get you on such a serious level. They sink it, you're poking they, your heart. They're poking at your heart. They want to know what, like, whether it be action, whether it be fiction, fantasy, war, 
cartoon, anime, you know, all these people try to tie something into some characteristic of people, char their characters, their lives, life's trials and errors, duties, you know, entitlements, like, all that kind of shit. Your intelligence, it is, like, blowing through the fucking room right now. Who the fuck is Jose Lopez? I'm just your average Joe working as a maintenance man at, up the road from my house, trying to keep a roof over my head, stay stable, man. I, I do fishing. I do I, I do traveling. I've seen 32 different states by the time I was 14. I've been humbled in many ways than most. I've seen more shit than most 80-year-olds, probably. I had a lot of family upbringings. I had a lot of family droppings, you know. It's more or less what comes down to me. I am a good father. I'm a good person to work with. I have good friends. I have good people in my corner always. Hell yeah. You know, I try to keep everybody positive. I, I don't do nobody wrong. People might feel like I'm doing them wrong sometimes or am I talking shit or something like that that they might. It's just your perspective. Miscommunication. My miscommunication, taking it in the wrong way. Like I've had people do that even recently over the years, just not, not trying to communicate, trying to be hostile over it. I'm not a hostile person. I used to be a hostile person, but I've tamed my beast. You know, I was humbled at a young age. I was humbled, humbled at a teenager. I was humbled as an adult. Many ways and most wouldn't even be able to come back from that humbleness. You know, people have tried to bring me down to the deepest parts of the fucking ocean or up to the farthest best eternity of the sky. You know, I, I used to be a sky gazer for days. I used to look into the ocean for days, you know. Not wondering what what more lies out there, you know. You're I mean, gonna love that Will Smith uh, show. You know, I watched it after after Earth. That was kind of cool. And if you, any of you guys have ever watched Star One Hundred, I think you need to take a step on there and net tune to Netflix because that's real life characteristics too. Shit that can happen after the world ends. But um, as far as what really Jose Lopez is, is I'm a I'm a good father. I just try and do what's best for people, what's best for my daughter. Try and keep everybody in the loop. I don't try to bring anybody out unless you're gonna step out on me first. Like if I gotta turn my back to you, I will wholeheartedly, genuinely do that and wish you the best. Don't ever come at me about conflict. I don't mind a conflictional person. I never had to fight physically fight somebody for my life or my friends or anything like that. I'm, I'm not. I don't like harming people because I was taught at a very young age by somebody that my mom was with, by my stepdad. Your hands are your greatest weapons. Your mind is your greatest weapons. Your body is your greatest weapon. If you use your any of that to harm somebody, you are pretty much dirt. But I and I and I'm I have tamed that part of me too because I was I was ignorant to people. I was relentless on some people occasionally. Like I didn't give a fuck what people said to me, what people had to do to me. I was right. You know, you don't mess with me. You had, you had siblings growing up. Three. I have three, three, but I've also had a lot of step siblings. Right. I was raised by a stepfather, great man, has had his trials in life, has ha has been humbled all his life, but he's a great man now for sure because of it. I was a very hard worker. What's his name? Christopher. Chris. Yeah, he's my stepdad. He's he's older now. Like I, I worry about him every single day. He's still, he's the reason why I'm in Michigan. He's from New York. Was a blue collar worker, basically the construction. Every trick of the trade, learned everything, he, and he still works. He's lost his fingers within the last couple of years. He's been in major car accidents. You know, this is my stepdad. He raised me and my sisters as his own, even having his own kids. I won't, like, they were, they're a little bit older than us, but he had his own kids. But he got with my mom when we were young. After my mom and my biological father divorced, you know, and literally... He took us in as his own, met my grandparents, did whatever he could to do to just keep me and my mom stable. But it's all just like any good family story. There's always dark sides of it, man. I, I a lot of shit went down, to, down far between me and my sisters, my mom, and my stepdad. Was a lot of when we were younger, people are abusive to each other. People can be abusive to anybody, you know, whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally, and it takes a toll on everybody around you. I, I lived in fucked up households at times for sure I lived in fucked up situations but my, I was raised by foster grandparents that fostered my mother before she had my older sister you know my mom's from Stockton California but yeah man like, as far as like where my mother came from I didn't really know my grandparents my blood grandparents and my 
aunts and uncles growing up or my cousins like that. But I did have cousins around, you know, that were technically my blood, but were at the same time because yeah. between me and my four sisters, when my mom had had us, uh, there was three, three guys involved over the years. My older sister didn't meet her father until she was of age, like she was 20-something. Me and my sister, at, that were born 94, 95, we never met our blood fathers. Damn, and you never, never met them? I'm fully named after them. My name is Jose Alberto Lopez Jr. And you never met him? Never met, met my blood father. The last I knew that he, when I was younger, he was in prison. I've seen one picture of him that yeah. with me and my younger sister after she was born. And he, when he was in prison and pretty much my mom divorced him and everything, I, I never heard from him again. Like I didn't even know where he was, but that was at around the time that my stepdad. Yeah, you wouldn't, you know, how would you know about him? I wouldn't, I was you, two or to... three years old at the time. My sister was barely even one, you know? And I had my younger sister that we knew she was born, but we didn't meet her until she was like three, four years old. She was being raised by her, her dad's sister, her aunt. Yeah. So when my stepdad and my mom, my stepdad and my mom basically worked together with my grandparents to get us all back together because at one point or another, we weren't all together. We weren't a family at all. There were, all four of us were separated at some time throughout our life, like we are now, you know? But my mom's upbringing, like she did the best that she could, just like my stepdad did the best that she could. My grandparents did the best that they could to raise us. And that's, that's humble beginnings, but that's, that's also really messed up beginnings. So uh, like stuff like that, like my being that my mother was fostered and taken care of by other people. It wasn't until we were like certain ages that we started meeting our blood relatives. We were, we were meeting other cousins, our blood cousins, my, our, our families on our father's side. It's not like, I've never met any of my other blood siblings besides my sister. But um, personally, like with that being like that, and just like my mom and us being raised by different people all the time. But just picking up with that being said, like with us not always being raised around our blood technically, but we knew that they were out there. Like I didn't even read, meet my youngest sister until she was almost four years old she was being raised by her blood father's sister her aunt so with us just being scattered so so often where we stand now as adults you know we're separated but we're separated in a good way positive way to be neutral is sometimes because uh, we don't even talk sometimes but we're always blood you know have you ever fished that animal uh, me and my sister used to fish when we were kids at the campground in, nice. in the ocean, you know, but at first when they, when it, only one of my sisters, my older sister just came to Michigan with my mom back in 2012, but they don't fish. They kind of take, my older sister kind of takes her kids fishing, but I don't even know what happens with my nieces and nephews and my, my two younger sisters side, you know, right. they're all, go, they're, we all go through our own issues, you know, we're, but we're still strong together. Like, I feel like if somewhere down the road, if I were to ever rekindle with my two younger sister as well as my older sister get our mom together get our stepdad together you know life might be different then but we can see how far all of us have come you know i've al always seen like it doesn't matter who you were raised by how thick your blood runs where your nationality your ethnicity where all, all that shit lies you know it's about a, who you put in your corner who you feel as family you know it's more of a feeling than anything feeling good Yep, feeling good. Feeling and good in this bitch. Feeling good. So, like that, like, being, meeting each other at different points in our lives when we were younger, and just kind of keeping up with our mom, like, trying to, like, our mom and stepdad were trying to be bright, but, you know, every family has its dark side, and me and, me and my stepdad, he had a lot of anger, just like I did when I was a kid. He was young, he was working a lot put me and my sisters and my mom into our own house. That was Mastic Beach. I was originally, we'll cover that part, school. I was originally born in Central Islip, New York in 1994, June 11th. I m was raised in Brentwood from my, my earlier like kid years, toddler years. And by the time I was a kid, from like third to fifth grade that I can remember, I can even remember some of middle school and high school like that, but uh, I went to four different school districts in high school. I went to two different school districts in elementary school. 
and I went to two different school districts. No, one school district in middle school, one school district was the same, but one of those school districts was always part of the other because it was William Floyd School District and Longwood School District in Long Island, New York. One was the only reason that we were there was because <clears throat> when we were living with our grandparents in Medford, that was Longwood, I went to middle school and elementary school. Like it, was, it was like kind of back and forth between these two schools here and there for some reason. I don't know why my mom chose to do it like that. Like I go here one year, go there the other year. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, but um, she said you're getting hella friends. Oh no, they were rival schools. What the fuck? Or, what, William Floyd and, and Longwood <coughs> school districts are rival school districts. All That's like through and through. Central like if I to went, Western. Central to Western. Yeah, no, exactly. But what if I went to the rival school district one year and I came back another year, you know? They didn't know. That, even though I'm not, I wasn't doing sports in middle school and elementary school. I did none of that. So it didn't pertain to me at all. As far as like what I was, why I was bouncing back and forth. But I had literally never did sports. Uh, high school. I took sports up in high school. Yeah. But we'll, cap we'll get to that. But uh, with that, like, seeing kids that I grew up with, like, I still have a best friend from third, sixth, ninth, uh, ninth grade. Like, I still have people I talk to from New York. Shout out to all of you guys. Like, y'all are my day ones for sure. You know who you are. You know, when you see this, you'll know who you are. I got a bro down there. I've known him since third grade. What if Colleen's watching? He's like, I don't know if he's talking about me. Nah, Colin, I only met at the side of the river. Oh, shit, that's a real name? Colin. Colin. Oh, Colin. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Colleen, sorry. <laughs> okay, he might, he'll, he'll, he'll think it's funny. But uh, he'll definitely catch that vibe from that one. But, um, but I haven't met him at the side of the river. But my friends that I met in school and everything, like I have still a lot of them from New York. On my page, social media page, I still yeah. I still call them sometimes. Some of them are in the military, done with the military, got kids of their own, you know. And they're that's what I've seen. They're like, I'm not the only one growing out here. Uh, far from them, they're like we're states away, miles. It's a big community. It's a big community that I still have. Like I've always been connected to my friends in other states. I think I don't, only people I don't talk to from other states that I kind of had friends with. I have some of them on my, on my Facebook was people from Oklahoma. Like I didn't I didn't really bother with them me knowing a lot of people in Oklahoma just because it was different for me. I felt like I was caged because I wasn't surrounded by water anymore. Did you uh, fish in Oklahoma at all? No. Nine months, never even touched my fishing rod. So you, so, you, so, you, so you mentioned before, uh, you've been to 32 states yeah, before I, the age of 14. Yeah. So 31 of them. Three of them I lived in. Did any of them, did any of them have water in the other 31? Well, um, I went all up and down the East Coast except Florida. I did I did Delaware. I did Connecticut. I did South uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Maryland, uh, Maine. I went up there. Up in, my uncle lived in New Jersey. Like That's why I was to Long Island Sound. Like, I went up and down there. I did a school trip in fifth grade for Connecticut. That's why I went there. But like, i seen a lot of these. Can you spell Connecticut? C O N N E. I. That's a trick man. question. A lot of people cannot spell Connecticut. <laughs> it's just is like there a UIT. It's just like one of those words. It's, it's, uh, it's like yeah. filibuster. Can you spell it? Can okay, you well, spell well, we're not gonna quote me on it. But I can't. I'm not gonna, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be asking this. I guess <laughs> off the top of my head like that, since you put me on the spot, I can do like half of it. Right? We're not even gonna cap on that one. And this is no cap TV. We can't be capping. But we are wearing some caps. All of us are. All of us. We're all wearing <laughs> some form of cap. But uh, right, we're not going to finish Connecticut. I do not spell it. <laughs> but <laughs> literally. He said, I'm looking it up right now. Let me spell Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I did go to Pennsylvania and like Philadelphia. Um, I got to, when I, after I moved to Michigan, I got to go to, to Illinois, Chicago, did the Pokemon Go Fest there. What the fuck was that one that was like popping in first? Oh, part? biggest, right year, off biggest year 2019 Pokemon Go Fest. Where there was motherfuckers when, dying for Pokemon Go. Yeah, I remember people walking off sides of mountains and shit. Yeah, like but, running into traffic, like, what the fuck? Dude, Pokemon Go, uh, we'll, we'll talk about all that, that's funny stuff, because that's part of my traveling too, like, people get paid to do that. You big time YouTubers get paid to do that. Being a Pokemon Go player was the, the fad when it was coming out. So if you're traveling on the road during these times, where you go, where, what was your priority one? Was it Pokemon Go, fish when I can? Was it no, fish actually, when I can, Pokemon Go after? Okay, no. From that, all that time of traveling, it was just 
going with the flow, going with the ropes, because I, I spent I spent the day at three days on a bus with my sisters and my mom when we moved to Oklahoma. And I didn't know what to expect. She took us right out of our sophomore year in high school. It was two weeks in. She's like, hey, we're packing up. We got bus tickets. We're leaving. This is that. Did mom. she ever tell you what the reason was so that y'all left? Yeah. No. I don't care to know. But um, it was a different It was a different chance for us, I guess, in her eyes. She thought that something good was going to come about it. We spent times alone in that state a lot for some reason. But being in there nine months, seeing what I seen in less than six, all the states, and then just being through school and everything. But uh, like I said, I kept in contact with a lot of those people that I met along the way, friends, random people. I was, I was 10 years old talking to this old dude on the bus, you know? I still remember his name, his name is Phil. You know? Fucking Phil, I know a lot of Phil. Phil, if you see this, hi. Yo, shout I don't out. remember what state we were from, but another I'm old now. You're an, old too. Another good Phil to listen to is yeah. Uh, Sueno. Yeah, Phil Sueno. <laughs> you ever heard of him? Yep, I heard the name, I just don't care. Follow. He's uh he's an artist from Downriver, uh, oh, Michigan. Oh, you fuck with this music, bro. He's hard as fuck. You so. fucking like it, man. Make it, back it, man. Nice mm-hmm. guys, yeah, for real. Yeah. But, um, like, but that, like, like meeting, so ran, meeting random people as kids, like, I, I was shy, but I was also, like, open to meeting people at the same time. Like, being in different states, like, I think my biggest culture shock was going to Oklahoma, though. Yeah. Because it was, it might have been 2008. But a lot of fucking Sooners. Sooners, man. All kinds of. What is a Sooner? Did you, did you ever like learn the definition of a Sooner? I thought it was something tied to a college football. Yeah. I think so. But it's like a tradition. Of because Oklahoma. you had OSU and you had OU. Sooners, I think, were OSU, o- Oklahoma State University. No. No. OU is the Oklahoma Sooners. Okay. The right. Oklahoma OU. State Cowboys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. See, I didn't know. I'm out. It's all right. I don't like college. Football. A legendary quote. If I don't know if you know this. Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State back, I don't even know how long it was. You're a little older, so you yeah. can probably work. Uh, I didn't even follow football back then. I don't even well, listen, it, you, you, you ain't got to follow football. You just remember this quote just because this shit was, went global. Uh, Mike Gundy literally is doing a press conference, and, and, and the reporters are dogging him. They're like, you know, they're, they're dogging one of the players that made a bad play. Mm-hmm. And Mike Gundy goes on there, and he goes, that's a boy out there. You want to come at me? I'm a man. I'm 40. You know, and it was just like, so yeah, it was like, I'm a man, I'm 40. Like that meme, it was just like, iconically global after that shit. Put Oklahoma, not even on the, not even on the map, but it was just like, yeah, okay, Mike Gundy, we we know who the fuck you are. You fight for your, you fight for your players. Yeah. So it was just like, yeah, Oklahoma State, Barry Sanders went there. You know what I'm saying? Just like, oh yeah, I remember that now. Icons. Yeah. But uh, as far as Oklahoma went, I didn't, I have respected going there. It's just. It was really different for me from living in New York because I'm being surrounded by water, just knowing people I knew all, all, all my life pretty much. Getting away from our grandparents, like we didn't see our grandparents for years. It was just a short stint there, you said, right? Yeah. Or six, nine yeah. months? That was nine months there. Yeah. I went through my whole school year, my sophomore school year in, o- in Oklahoma School District. Spent Spencer, Oklahoma is where I stayed. Yeah. Star Spencer School District was where I went to. It was the biggest shocking school. Like it wasn't... Dude, when my shock was when the day one when I walked up in there and they had metal detectors and they had you lay out your backpacks to be searched. They got that shit essential now. But this was, dude, this was 2008. This was over 14 years ago. Right. This is how that. That's how they went down. They searched your backpacks. They metal detectors. They get years. down is real. Somebody bringing in the revolver, Bro, probably. I remember getting one, one time I got suspended and had to do in school suspension because I brought a pocket knife to school one time because I forgot it was in my pocket because I was cleaning my nails out with it. Yeah. Ten yep. days. When I was a kid, I brought a, I brought a box cutter under the bus just because I wanted to show my friends they could do it. No, I yeah. was literally. Sick. I didn't even know <laughs> it was in my pocket. I was just gonna <laughs> <I> was gonna, <laughs> do whatever. I was gonna tuck it. Hey, in the 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 I was on the bus and I realized I had it. I was just gonna tuck it in the seat, but I'm like, man, someone's gonna find this. So I just walked up in school with it, like, oh, I'm probably gonna get caught with this. Thought I could tuck it in my shoe or something, but they made you take your shoes off too. I'll ask you this article that uh, recently just came out. It's a uh, my wife's friend's little brother. Mm-hmm. Basically, he's he's like a hunter, does all the hunting shit. Mm-hmm. Well, he actually was hunting and then that morning and then went to school and literally fucking had like his gun, a loaded gun mm-hmm. with in his backpack on accident. He oh. turns himself in, mm-hmm. turns himself in, lets him know like, hey, I have a, I accidentally, you know, brought this from hunting. Yeah. They fucking make an article on M Live saying he was planning <laughs> to shoot up the place. 
Oh, how oh, oh. See, bad, bad publicity, people. Bad publicity, bad media. Um, don't fuck with those people. Yeah. Don't. I don't. I'm live. I. I They're on bullshit. On bullshit. But uh. Why? Do not deal with those public rapists for real. Do not deal with social media level people that tie and take and turn people. Do not sway me. <coughs> like I don't deal with none of that. People who like that. See, that comes out with all types of life. Like when when social media become has become such a big thing. And there's people that try to indulge in your fad, whatever, what it, whatever you're trying to do. They will try and rape you for your freaking content. They will try and take that away from you because you're doing something else. Or th- whatever you post, man. People are, government is using our faces and people are scamming your faces just to be able to put up Photoshop this, Photoshop that, make fake accounts, do this, do that, try to explore your life, you know? But bad publicity. That's, yeah. that's all that is. And like, you don't, don't fuck with it. For real. Um, but for real, like, with that being said, like, shit like that, as far as, like, for from where people come from in Oklahoma and people with big names and stuff like that, I didn't really deal with it. I didn't like, I didn't like the vibe in Oklahoma. I, that's why I only spent nine months there. I spent three months of it alone by myself, taking care, taking care of myself, going to wrestle. I was just getting into wrestling, had to work for myself. My mom and my little sister went back to New York for a little while. We're not going to get into a big time about all that stuff. But my aunts and my sister, my grand, my grandparents, my blood aunts my, took care of me and my sisters while my mom was back state to New York for a little while when we moved to Oklahoma. And essentially, like, I learned how to take care of myself around a lot around that had time. Had to grow up quick. Yeah, I had to grow up quick because I was alone. Like, I wouldn't see my aunts and grandparents, my sisters, for a month for days, weeks, I, sometimes. It was three months deep that I was sitting in an, em- an empty house by myself. I had I had food in the cabinets. What I would you food. explain the relationship with, like, your mom? Me and my, I'm her only son. I'm my mom's blessing to this world. I was planned by her and her and my father. Like, they wanted me. I was fully, fully, like, knew that, like, I was coming into this world. They knew that I was coming into this world. There was no regrets about having me. And that's why I'm actually named after my father because they had... And he got incarcerated shortly after you were born? Shortly after I was born, yep. And pretty much how that went down is, like, my relationship with my mom, it's bittersweet. But I always love my mom because she's, she is the one who brought me into this world. Like, she tries to... She tries to play as passive, passive with a lot of things. And, like, I love her. Like, she never did really did me wrong as a kid. Like, yeah, she, sure, we had screwed up situations. She messed with the wrong people, got in with the wrong people as kids, when we were kids. My mom was growing up just like we were. My mom had me and my sister 17, 18, 19, another go. and 20, 20 years old. She had four of us right down the line. She was still a teenager when she had my first sister. And she just moved to New York. My mom was 17 in New York when my sister, before my sister was born and got fostered by my grandparents and, and shit like that. But I love my mom. She's done a lot for me. Shout out to my mom. Like, Shout out to everybody's mom. Take a, take a little moment to go pause what you're doing, pause this video, and go, you know, you know give your mom a call, text your mom that you, you know, it's you're thinking about her, whether, whether you got a good relationship with her or a bad relationship, hey, just, just take the time to, you know, just thank her, you know, because there's, there's something you're, you're thankful for. Yeah. I'm thankful for my, for my stepdad as well, but like my mom, obviously, she was always there, like, n- n- more so when I was a kid than when I'm an adult now, because I guess... I haven't seen her in 10 years. I video chat her, she, she decided the last time that I would see her in the best possible way, whether it be, what well, it happened to be my high school graduation. Like, I hadn't seen her for four years before I graduated. No. I was like, yeah, no, two years. It was like three or four years almost before I seen her when I graduated. Cause I, cause this is how I was going through school. She was working. And everything else under the sun was going on with them. They were still, they went, my sisters and my mom, when I was, after I moved from them, they went to Florida, they went to Georgia, hopped around a little bit, went back to New York and shit. Like, I, I, I was done with that. I didn't want to stay hot no more. I didn't right. want to see. I was seeing it too fast. I looked at what my mom was doing for us was great at the time because we were seeing a lot, but it was happening too fast. We didn't know what to think about it because there's more or less. You couldn't enjoy it. I couldn't enjoy it. I have time to enjoy it now, for real. Like, I've seen the traveling I do just in the state of Michigan since I've come here, but it's because I, I made it so that I can do that. I didn't really start doing that until probably 2015, 14, that I really started seeing Michigan, and I've been here since 2008. I didn't really start fishing until, until 2013, 
right. in here. Like there was a few, there was a great period. Like I wasn't, I was just going through life, just being a normal teenage boy, skateboarding, fishing, and playing with my friend, hanging out with my friends, playing video games and shit. But that all leads to me, like my me and my cousins, like we, the friends I have now and the friends I had when I was growing up here in Michigan. Like we hung out the same way, ate snacks, party, played video games, watched TV. Enjoyed, enjoyed your fucking childhood. And to being teenagers, you know, we were doing a bunch of stuff. Like, I was always the older one, too, though. Like, I got a, a best friend that I still consider my best friend, even though, you know, we might not see eye to eye about everything, but to this day, he's still my best friend. We, and we're born on the same day, June 11, 1994. Shout out to you, bro. I know we don't talk right now, but shout out to you. But, uh, he's been my best friend, and we share the same, we share a lot of the same life path. Like, he always had his mom. His dad wasn't in the picture, but like he hasn't traveled. And when he met me, like meeting the people that I meet here is just like meeting people other places. Like there's always going to be some kind of tie. We're going to always see some kind of tie to what we do in our in our life path, you know. And meeting those people on the way, doing what I do, I see I see a, the commonness. I see the uncommon. I see the neutralities between all of us, you know. Cause like. Just like me and this guy, I met this kid when he was, <laughs> was he, he, he was little. Was he like was that. little. He was like tiny, this. Bro. I would never even see nothing like this coming out of him. Yet. Me really? and you, we met on the airsoft field, blowing doobies, yeah, playing, shooting at each other. Didn't even know literally, that shit was so random. It was, it was just so like, random because I didn't even know. I, same the dude that hit us all up, I got everybody together, collaborated, all that. I didn't know who he was. My buddy just hit me up one of the day. You want to go down to this airsoft shop and go buy some airsoft guns and so we can shoot at each fuck each other? This and motherfucker got some crazy, crazy aim. guns, bro. Bro, like, I caught, I caught and this sniper. I was like, sniper. oh, shit, this is a real. Bro, you about to shoot bro, this? this sniper, like, who, what kind of sniper, number one, lays in a hallway on the ground and and tries to corner somebody with another with their, their partner? Dude, I dropped to my stomach and blasted him right under his glasses. Do you remember that? I remember uh, somebody got hit. What's his name? What's his name? Oh, I can't remember his name now. Jake, 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 uh, Jake, Jake No, I knew the tall Chris. kid, the tall blonde, the I knew tall blonde kid. I knew no one else. Oh well, I needless to say, I dropped to my stomach and shot him. It was basically like his eye. So if y'all can, him. if y'all can imagine, it's basically crazy for some reason. I meet this dude Chris, and he's like, "Hey, come, come, come out to this airsoft shot." I was like, "I ain't got no fucking airsoft guns. I ain't got no nothing." Here. He's like, "Oh no, we got you." And I was like, "Okay." Motherfucker had duffel bags like full of AKs, AKs but they're <laughs> like, but they're like all AK airsoft guns. AK seventy four U. So I'm like, everything. what the fuck? Pistol airsoft, uh, <clears throat> uh, CO two pistols, everything. It was lit as fuck. So I was like, I was kind of just like in shock. Helmets, like, oh, helmets, shit. gloves. These gear. motherfuckers are doing it like four on four, five on five, five well, go we, this uh, way, we, five go this way. They out the line. Like it was a vibe, though. bro. It was a I was like. Uh, live for sure. Yeah, they went live doing it and shit. They recorded it. I, got I was like, still. I got bro, it, still. it was just wild shit. I was like, what the I hell did it. I just walk into? You know, yeah, like, it, was, it was a war zone. zone. It was a real life war zone. It was cool as hell. So I remember just like wanting to really like snipe some motherfuckers. And like this dude had like a night, an actual sniper. He had no, actual, I didn't have a sniper. I had a, I had a, so I had an M1. You had some brown, some brown. It was a the brown gun. It was a tan gun. Bro, they look, yeah. they look crazy. It looked like some real, real tactical military marine yeah. fucking rifle. I was like, this bitch is crazy. And and he would watch me just slide up in some window or something, hop over, blah, 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 climb out here, just different, tuck my bro. gun under somewhere and just shoot somebody in the ankle or something because you could do that. You, could you need to drop the fucking film. You need to drop it. What are you doing? Uh, you have the you have the video of public. Oh, I have the vi uh, of the video of us playing, and you can see the one the one video of the kid coming out with his cheek leaking because I shot him directly under his eye. He yeah. thought he had the BB lodged in his face because, dude, I just had bought this gun. I just had charged the battery. It was ready to roll. Right. He was the on the wrong side of the of the barrel, bro. Yeah, headshot. And you do not. Well, oh, no, he had he had safety. He had a helmet. He had safety glasses. I caught him just under his glasses. You were aiming and design. And well, vision. no. What happened? Right. I was ambushed in a hallway. Two guys came out this way. I dropped. There was a hump here in the dirt, just to where if I dropped, I wasn't gonna get blasted to my in my face. Right. So I was wearing a full helmet, like paintball helmet, so yeah. big goggles. Well, I got hit, actually got hit in my knuckle when this happened. It, it didn't feel good. But when I dropped, I aimed up into the left and to the right. I just sprayed at both of them. Next thing I hear, fuck, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, what? And you see him turn around at me. And 
his hand, his face is already starting to leak. I'm like, did I get you in your eye? He's like, no, but damn close, man. You got a good aim. I wasn't even aiming. He said, let her rip. Let her rip. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, there is a video of him walking out on the field from where that camera person was, and you just see his cheek just, the steady stream just coming down his cheek, and you're trying to talk to him, and he thinks he's got the DB lodged in his face when the DB dropped. Right. Cause I, but my gun was fully loaded, fully ready to rock, like, wrong time, wrong place, bud. So if not for, you know, kind of creating this movement, what would what would Jose Lopez be doing on the daily? Working at the school. I, I've been at the school district three years now, State Street Academy. Shout out to you guys. You guys have blessed me with such great opportunities. You know, all my bosses, all my mentors, all my friends that I've come to know there. I'd be working and fishing, man. Kept just keeping ties with my daughter, raising her as a father, being doing the father thing. General maintenance, I've done so much in that school. I've taught touch every base of that school basically how old your daughter now she's six six yeah it's a good it's a good age it's but, a good um, age i feel like i hope just... to have her going to school with me or something so they hit that yeah. fucking they hit that teenager fucking um, phase i feel I, I feel like my daughter won't even be like that i feel like she'll still be a blessing to me of course like i, I raise her right i treat her right i show her good and bad you know i'm not i'm not hostile towards her i don't show her the negative way to discipline your child i always show her the positive way of discipline yeah. you know just because I've gone the negative way. I've seen the negative way. It ain't, it ain't right. It just, it puts a lot of stress on your family ties. It puts a lot of stress on your parents, just the kids alone, you know? I went through a lot of shit as far as like raising, being raised, and then now having to raise my own child. I had a lot, and I've had nothing as a child. Like, absolutely nothing. Like, nothing. When I mean that, it's just like bare minimum. You, you're your you're kid. You get nothing. But I've had everything. I've had the newest Wii. I've had the newest Xbox. I've had the newest PS3 when it came out. I had the Xbox 360 when those dropped. That those those Thanksgivings those years. I got those. My uncle was in the store. My mom was in the store ready to buy those for me and my sisters. You know, we yeah. had three Xbox 360s the day it came out. That's I've had good. I've had everything. Every game system under the sun, except the newer ones, the PS5, Xbox One, Series X, whatever you want to call it. But I've had it. But I've also had nothing, man. I, there's times I didn't even have a TV. There's times I didn't even have a Game Boy. There's times I, you know, they didn't have a skateboard to ride. I was walking to work, walking to work, going, walking to school, walking to wrestling practice. <coughs> Shout out to Central and uh, Star Spencer High School for getting me to wrestling. Um... I did three years in high school. I didn't do it. Uh, I tie, I stayed kind of in tune with wrestling in my junior year, but because of the school district I went to, I could they didn't have a wrestling program. Right. So I just played with my wrestled with my friends. We had fun with it, you know. Just keeping ourselves agile. We're teenagers, you know, early adults. But like with shit like that, like raising my kid, fishing, working, just normal people shit. And just he sick. said normal people shit. He ain't lying. This is, I'm not, I'm not, nine I'm not, to five is real, man. I look at it this way. I've done the four to twelve. I've done the six to two. I've done the eleven to seven. I've done the the three to eleven thirty. I've done the two to ten. I've done all everything but third shift. I've even done the third shift one time or, or another. That's not my game though. I like this. I like being in my bed sleeping. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of third shift gigs. And I don't like them twenty four hour shifts. Them boys are man. Rude. The farthest I ever got was twenty four hours. I did eighteen hours. Yeah, yeah I've done an eighteen hour shift. Eighteen hours at Harvey's. I was like, doing before they closed down just up the road. Harvey's. Hold. Shout out to Harvey's in Saginaw because I love that f damn food and I'm coming back one day. The fucking buffalo chicken wrap is Ooh, fucking massive. Yes. Yes. It's like nine dollars. And you but get fries. And, and you get fries, and you can add extra cheese and bacon if you want to. I didn't know that. But you get, like, fucking basically four little mini fucking... Meals. Yeah, it's, it's for it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Shout out to Harvey's in Saginaw. I miss that the, they don't have a Bay City location anymore. I worked there for two years. I, I miss Fazoli's. Y'all motherfuckers remember some Fazoli's? Fazoli's? That was I heard the about, shit. That was the shit. Send it to me. I can't even see it right now. There's what, uh... So you've been, all, been to all these states. What would you say... Out of the 31 states, because you've been 32 before you were 14, and mm -hmm. you obviously didn't fucking fish in Oklahoma. Where would you say is the best fishing at? 
Right here in Michigan. <coughs> yeah, say that shit. Right here in Michigan. And them boys from Ohio don't like to say our motherfucking names. So say that Michigan. shit. Michigan. Okay. Uh, Michigan. Uh, what is it? Lake, Lake, uh, the, the, the fucking Great Lakes. Tributaries. Saginaw Bay. Saginaw River. If you know it, you need don't know it, you need to go there. Yeah. You guys are don't know what the fuck this place can... Where at? People, Where at again? Bay City, Michigan. Michigan. Okay. Michigan. Saginaw yeah, those motherfuckers Bay. call us... To, they call us Teton. You believe that shit? What? what? The what fucking team. The team up north. You goddamn cocksuckers call us Teton. What the fuck? Yeah, they only like to say our name. Say it's like one time. Michigan. Hey, there you go. Hey, y'all could have fucking won the national championship if you just might, made the kid. I might be a natural born Yankee, but you, my, 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 my soul lies with Michigan now because I'm surrounded by water still. Might be fresh water, ain't salt water, but Michigan has the number one fishing all around. Whether you think of salt water, because we have salt water species who have adapted to fresh water, meaning that king salmon, your steelhead, your, your brook trout, your, uh, Coho salmon, your pink salmon, those are all fish that are not native to our Michigan waters. Damn, yeah, my brain is all salt. My brain's looking for words, and then we're trying to grab them. We're trying to grab them right now. Those are all I salt. I heard of trout, species. heard of salmon. Those are, well, they're, trout and salmonoids are the same thing. And they're, yeah. they're the same family, fish species. Good so fish, good fish to eat. Oh, preferably oh. salmon. Salmon's my favorite. Salmon. No, you gotta try brown trout. Brown trout. See, this man told me to stay away from the browner fish. So I'm now he's saying brown trout. Now he's saying he's brown trout. Well, you know? brown, good thing. I ain't eating it. The brown trout are already even brown. I ain't fucking eating it. Oh, what color? They're liars. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> they're beautiful fish. Why don't, they, why don't they call them something different and beautiful? Change the name. Yeah. Well, it's like a rainbow trout. It it's rainbow colored. Why would you call a brown trout like a, a speckled trout or something like that? It's, it's like speckled with a bunch of different colors and shit. Like, oh, a splatter like, fish. Yeah, you don't like that trout. Speckled shit. Yeah, there you go. Call it a fun fetty fish. A fun, fun fetty fish. trout. A fun fetty trout. They should trout. definitely get creative with it. Yeah, yeah man. We, 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 there we, are creative fish names out there. Yeah. There are creative fish names out there, but, like, if, for instance, an angelfish. It don't look like a fucking angel. No. But it's creative. A Dunkle Stesosaurus. Say it again? A Dunkle Stesosaurus. Yeah, that shit was wild. Make sure y'all look that up. Yeah, look, look that shit up. <laughs> but, um, that's the one he was talking about earlier where they, you said they confirmed that it's still alive. Us, there's one still alive, but they probably killed it because they put it in captivity. I'm going to say bullshit. And I'm going to say it's not alive. <laughs> I think it's just fucking... N mean looking. <laughs> the FBI trying to do some sneaky shit. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, this Michigan it definitely has... My biggest tie to fishing, even though I didn't tap into the waters probably till like 2014, and even by myself. I moved here, my stepdad before I had to buy a fishing license because you have to buy you have to be 16 and have to start buying a state of Michigan license so you can fish. Once you reach that age, or you could just find a lake and just fish for free. <laughs> Who the fuck cares, right? No, they they do they do. DNR, DNR if you're listening serious. to this, this is a test. You know we are not provoking. Illegal, illegal fishing. fishing. No, definitely have your license. Go get your license. It's twenty six dollars at your any sportsman center. Buy that fucking pot. <laughs> go, just go, just go fucking enjoy it. Fishing is fun. You can do great, but um, you can feed your family with it. Damn. But uh, you feed your whole family. This, this you, you must be. I Amish. just fed my whole. You bro, must you be seen Amish. The, my step, my just last Friday, they didn't know about it. They'll see it. We're gonna have to see. It. We did it, me personally, we did it, but we also did it prior to this. When I first started working there, me and my, couple, my buddies got a bunch of our fish together, walleye and perch, and we fried it up for the staff. Now our staff, since in the last two years, has grown to double what that originally was, right? I personally pulled every unit I could together, every minute, every time, every lure, time out on the water, to fill my freezer, which it's not big, it's not very big at all, to provide a whole fish fry for my whole staff just last week and everybody yeah. enjoyed it even people who didn't even like fish tried it and enjoyed it oh yeah but i did it because i had the time to i told them i was going to we did it before we're going to try and make it an, an annual thing i want to even do it in the spring i want to do one in the spring when the walleye start coming in but so is it walleye that you that yes you walleye right there guys so if you get if you catch a walleye Make sure that motherfucker is ice cold and donate that motherfucker to the Lopez Limitless fucking cause. For the, you know, make this shit an annual thing and make sure, you, you know, he's not doing a shit all on, all on like, his own. And that's like, like a lot of that with saying that, like, man, like everybody enjoyed it. But I was just before that, like you said, I was gifted something by my co- I do so much for my coworkers. I don't give no. Is that no, the bike? 
Yeah, the bike. Yeah, that bike is fucking Before real. I did this event, they already knew that I was already in the process of getting this event together, but I didn't know that this is what they were going to present me with before this event, especially around Christmas time when I was just getting all this stuff going. Like, it was all coming to mind and really putting it out there as far as what I do. You're like, I'm expecting a card and a thank you. Yeah, so I even got a, I got, we get bonuses and everything. I've had raises and everything. I'm, I'm so blessed by that. Like, I've never had a job that appreciates me so much, especially with people I work with. It's rare these days. It really is. And being there for so long, doing as much as I did, like, yeah, I've, I've had common days just I'm pissed off. I don't want to do it. Uh, but more you know, days that I'm upset and just down about shit. Just like, everybody has their ups and downs, especially through work. You know, I try, but I, every day I try to not walk in there just thinking about everything. I, I do this. Now that I'm three years in, I do the same thing pretty much every night, eight hours a day. That's my job. It's do this, do that, do this room, do that room. Just basic cleaning. Yeah. But before, dude, for two years, it was just a hassle, man. I, I went through a lot, a couple summers, just hell on wheels, didn't know what the hell we were doing, trying to just get the, the school together, redo it, refurbish it, painting, cleaning, redoing glass, paints, all kinds of stuff, all inner workings of the school because it was a, it's a kind of a, was a kind of beat up building, but now it looks a lot better. Like, all the hallways are repainted, the floors have been waxed, classrooms have been waxed, classrooms have been painted, all kinds of stuff. And, and it's not only me doing it, but I've done a lot of it, you know? Took I, pride in that shit. T- it took a lot of pride, and they, they all... It's like, it's like seeing, like, a roofer, you know, whenever he goes to that, that neighborhood with his kids, he's like, oh, yeah, I fucking did the roof on that building. No, I did the stairs I can literally point... I did the stairs I can walk through a school. I can walk through a school, and, and just like other people know, I, I, I waxed all the floors. I cleaned all the floors. I've painted the classrooms. I've painted the cabinets. I've painted. I painted the inner workings of, of the school. You know, my and it's not me that's only doing it, but my coworkers as well. And I even got local on a local artist. Shout out to you, Nicole, because you're going big in places. She's a local artist, Mason and Dallas. Shout out to her. Um, Nicole she did, who? Anton. Okay. She did, did two. Oh yeah. Uh, she did two murals in the school. I, I want to say her, she went to I school her, Central. I gave her just like. Uh, having an opportunity that I do at the school, I gave my one of my closest friends, girlfriends, who has a son, his name is Mason, but she takes pride in her art. She takes pride in everything that she does with her art. Has had a business for a couple years now. Put her art in different states and different countries, and I and I I commended her. I supported her the whole time on that. Shout out to Nicole again. But I gave her the opportunity to talk to my bosses when we were refurbishing things in the school and everything. She now has two murals in that school with her name on it. Oh damn. She did the cafeteria and she did one outside, and they're both beautiful murals. And we keep them, we keep them nice because that, that's something she takes pride in. It's like I take pride in my work, and I, seeing people who take pride in their work makes me know that we're surrounded by the right people. Right, I have many mentors at the school, but I'm being meant, I'm mentoring kids, I'm mentoring other other friends as well. You right. know, I'm surrounded by great mentors, but I'm also trying to be a mentor at the same time. You know. It's a great thing working at that school. I love every everybody that I come in contact with there, whether you're not around working there anymore or we are still present day working together. Give, being that, given that opportunity to do the event, being able to know the, all these people, like my boss is dang, dang near my work mother. Like she treats me as a, I'm one of her own son. So does her husband. Like they, they her husband's hired her husband her for a shout out to you, Chris. You're a great boss, man. Shout out to my best, one of my old best friends. She was a great boss too. You know, might not see all eye to eye with that as well, but like everybody I work with, everybody I come in contact with, be friends, coworkers, family. Like I try and give everybody the same support that they give to me, if, even if it's negative sometimes. Like some, because there is such thing as a negative support system. Yeah. You can't have a negative support system. It just depends on how you take it, take it into effect. But you can also have a very positive support system, and I've noticed and I've embraced my positive support system. And it's the people I work with, the people I keep around me. It's important, for sure. And being working with kids, I love kids. And I mean, I used to, at one point at the school, I used to have to take the older kids, the, the teenagers, out for recess and stuff. Yeah, they didn't listen, but they respected me. <laughs> yeah, they didn't listen at all. He okay. said, they fucking run in here, they're running there. It's they respected 20 minutes me to go. When, they, when I told them it was time to go, they knew it was time to go back inside. Oh, that's cool, then. Like, some of them didn't listen, some of, you know, some of them were a little... We used kids, to keep man. playing basketball sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Some of them were just like that. We but got, we got to the at the end, of the end of the day, I was there making sure they were all safe, trying to get them back in the school, making sure there was nothing like you know, kids are getting in fights, all that kind of stuff. But I don't do none of that anymore. My my job has been pretty basic now. I do the same thing every night. I, I, I don't give grief about it. 
I didn't, I didn't really get grief about it before, but some days I just was like, man, I don't really want to go to work today. You know? That happens to everyone. That happened to me in the military. I don't want to fucking get up, go to but PT. Even fucking with that being said, to. like, they, I've had vacations there. Like, I've got time to go fishing. They, 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 they've sufficed me so far that I would have never thought that I would have been able to just last year take time off to go fishing and get paid to do that. Right. To take time off just to have time with my kid, sit around at home, get paid to do that. Um, but I also had COVID at one point, had to take time off for that. I was paid just to sit at home and get better for COVID. That's nice. COVID was a, a little thing when I first started after school. We're still coming out of COVID. We, when I, is COVID still a real thing? Sure I is. Think it is, yeah. Sure is. But um, I had people die from that. It's, that was a fucked up feeling for sure. But um, I was stepping into the school basically right when they were coming out of COVID, like when the schools were allowed to reopen. And we had designations from the health department. We had to wear masks. We had to scrub these uh, desk the dividers and all this shit. So like with that, like coming into the system like I was, I didn't know what to expect at the school, man. And I almost, to be honest, I was almost fired Three months in, we're not going to cover that. She, my boss knows why, because we, we talked about it recently. But I almost, almost was fired three months into working there. And I asked my my boss right before New Year's, if you, today, where would you see me today if you would have fired me that day? And you know what she told me, bro? Shout out to you, Lisa. She's like, I don't know where you would be, but I'm glad it didn't happen that way. Yeah. Because I'm, I am where I am today because of where I work and the people around me. You know, they're helping you kind of get this get this movement started. Speaking of that, what, what is the movement uh, called? What do you what do you call this giveaway? Because I know once we share it, you know, I know a lot of people, even myself. What, you know, I, wanna, I think I want to donate some clothes from the store. You know, I want to. This is gonna be the limitless motivation. Like it's just to motivate people that you can be anybody, you can know anybody, you can do anything with what your time. It just where your perspective is. If you want to give something wholeheartedly and genuinely to somebody, just do that. If you feel like it's gonna change their day, just do that. No. This is the limitless motivation. Limitless motivation. You know, you can continue to motivate people every day. It just depends on who, what your perspective is, your mindset, how you do things with your life. You know, don't be ignorant to people. That's simple, too. Like, stop being ignorant. People are, you know, we're not, we're only here for so long. We have so much time on this earth that I feel like the longer you sit here, the longer you dwell on what's negative in life. I almost lost my life as a young child. I was very unhealthy. I was skinny, just like I was small, just like I am. I was hospitalized and cut out with IVs in my arm. I know what it is like to not have no freedom. Sit up, stare at the ceiling, not wondering if you're gonna get out of this hospital or not. You know, I've been sick and, and bedridden. I I just personally, just in June, I just went through Lyme disease. I contracted Lyme disease that put me down. Damn. The worst feeling of my life. I felt so down. I felt so destroyed because. I had a bacterial infection that was infecting my body because I didn't get treatment right away. I cut, went through stages and it's kind of, even though I was treated, it kind of affects me to this day. I know just like COVID, every disease, every virus, everything has residual effects. Everything that you do in life has residual effects on you. And with that being said, like, Lyme disease has killed people before. Cancer has killed people before. Cigarette smoking has killed people before. You never know what's actually gonna take your life. You don't know. It can you can accept it how it is, or you can make sure if that you're not dying by your own hand or by per personal fuck up. Right. Like if a virus kills you, maybe it, you're you're you aren't just healthy enough. Be healthier. If somebody's trying to attack you, be ready to protect yourself. If somebody's trying to step in your life and pull you out of the situation that could be better or worse. Take the better option, you know? Take that better route because it can really benefit you in the long run because you don't know where you're gonna be. Live to see another day. Live to see another day, live to see another positive day, you know? Good good feelings. Hell yeah, good, good feelings, feeling good. Feeling good, you know? Hey, the limitless motivation. Like I said, we're gonna be we're gonna be bringing more awareness to it. I definitely think you should have like a, a specific page for it because it's my, gonna get big. Right now on my Instagram, I've had it for in my Snapchat, and my Facebook. I've had all that for a better part since I've moved to Michigan. Yeah, I've kind of, I don't have any. Other, these are my primary accounts, but if you really want to add me, that's my fishing account currently. But I've had it since like 2013. If you scroll down, that's me when I was a teenager. That's yeah. me just po screenshotting random quotes and still posting it to my Instagram. 
but in the last like I'd say five six years you'll see more and more fishing pictures <coughs> fishing pictures me kind of doing what I'm doing traveling the state you know all that but it's limitless Lopez 420 on Instagram you're gonna get hashtagged yeah oh, they'll, know where, they'll know where to find you yeah they'll know where to find me and I don't got a big following like my, my following on Instagram is under 300 people I bet it's because my personal friends is people I've known from fishing that's other fishing pages that's other YouTube pages you know and I, it's not big like it's not big at all I'm like I'm saying I'm local I do what I do I post my fishing pictures to my Instagram and my Facebook and you're on Snapchat. TikTok no I don't know TikTok I don't, yeah, play with I, that. It. I don't mess with TikTok it's important for what you're doing yeah, well, we'll, 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 run, we'll run with it. We'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll wheels. show you. I'll show you how to utilize it, man. Even this guy will tell you. you spin know, the, we'll spin the wheels. It's just so important because you know we talk about you know Instagram, right? Yeah. You know Instagram, it used to be it's really like, really free and open. Yeah. <laughs> and then it got to the point where like they're jamming advertisements down our throat, or yep. jamming advertisements down our throat, so that you can have a million fucking followers. You can have, you know, ten million followers. You know, when you post a video, it's going to a, a, a like yeah. three percent of that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because you know, like it's it's like, hey, if you imagine if you have 15 million followers and you make a video, then I'm all looking at your Instagram. You're basically like a fucking channel. You're basically yeah. like a fucking a CBS or a NBC or yeah. You know, like during what is it like a football game? They get like 18 million fucking mm -hmm. you know views. Oh yeah. So like, imagine you 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 have 18, 15 million people watching your shit at the same time. Well, you should be getting, you know, a hundred, hundred thousand dollars plus. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, that's well, like even like that, like people do in the fishing game, in your game, you know, people do that already. Like a lot of what we're doing already right now, talking about this. But my buddy, um, who does the charter company, has a deck hand who has established this. He knows just as much as I do about fishing in, in the fishing game, but he knows the big social media fishing game. But I know the inner social media game. He knows the outer, I know the inner. Yeah, he's got, being said, got to incorporate them both for sure. Well, he's already, he works with deckhands as a deckhand, Colin DeRue. Man, you already know where this is going, bro. I had to bring you in this. He works as a deckhand with online charters. They're already established, well, it's established charter company. This one you said you wanted to work with? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no Dave Long, no Eric Long, no Colin DeRue. You know, we made it on the Great Lakes Fisherman Digest Search that on YouTube. Saginaw River, Bay City, Michigan. Just this past winter, J J January, February 2022, we made it on there. I wasn't in the pictures because I'd be doing stupid stuff in the pictures. And we hit a 16-man limit, 16 people over 100-plus while I hit the ice that day. Damn. And everybody went home ready to fill, fill their freezers and play their fish. But that, with that being said, the fishing community, the podcast community, as far as that, like people interview big, interviewing big wigs like John Bergsma, um, KVD, Kevin Van Dam, um, all these big, uh, all these big YouTubers like, like Tom Foley, Jay Siemens, Clayton Schick Outdoors. These like people were guides when they were coming up. People were doing stuff in their own. Two of those people I just mentioned were ca Canadian, and I've actually been in contact on Instagram with Jay Siemens. Yeah. Like, I've talked to him and so a couple of these YouTubers about stuff like this. Just like again, getting myself out, you know, like knowing these people because I see what they do and they do stuff like this. They give events, they give fishing rounds to people, they take them out, they do fishing schools, they do fishing seminars. Give, they don't have their own guide system, their their own YouTube channel. But I've t like I've seen all this and knowing the in and out of all that stuff, like what you guys do, like from McNass to his music to you and your podcast, I see with the fishing community. It's local, but it's, it's also huge. global. It's huge. It's global. Dude, I started at local. I'm state worthy. I'm going to... It. It's With fishing, it comes to they the say that fishing. They say that fishing is becoming a, a national problem. You know, so many people are fishing, fishing, fishing. Actually, and that they see fish... They, they see fish being extinct by 2054. I call cap. You know why? Why? That's not... It's not that, there's not enough fishing. The state of Michigan, the DNR, the reason why walleye are allowed to be kept in the Saginaw River, Saginaw Bay system at 13 inches, eight apiece every day, is because their fish spawn five to 10 to 20 times the amount we do. We only can carry one child or two, three, maybe four child at a time. By depending on the weight, the species of the fish. All y'all motherfuckers that have quintuplets and above, we're sorry. We're sorry, but they, these, these fish have, depending on pound, 
10,000 babies at a time per pound. Per pound. I could show you, a, I could cut a walleye open, I could cut a salmon open for you. You wanna see how many babies they have? You don't, because it's disgusting. But, needless to say, there's no way that fish are, the only reason that fish are gonna go extinct is because what we're doing polluting the water. What we're doing terraforming the water. What we're putting into our water. Trying to clean up our water. Oil spills, natural, national disasters, flames, burning shit, sediment, all kinds of shit going into yeah. our waters. That's the only reason deoxygenating the water, number one, meaning losing water, oxygen in our water, meaning HCO, the main component, what makes water. Hydrogen, two cloud, two, and oxygen, one. You lose, take that oxygen out of there, there is no water. We lose it all. It becomes, we have a natural, national global drought. Now imagine the water, the rivers, the waters. Like rivers dry up. We had we had a natural disaster right. with uh, Edenville Dam and and Sanford Dam. Yeah. Now we've already re. I watched during that water system. Boy, it was had a wild time. Four years of high water, and then when that happened, them dams blowing out. Dude, we've already rebounded from that because I've had some of the best walleye perch fishing ever after the river dropped back down to its natural levels, which it is right now, and receded off of that high water but i've done more better at a lower water year than i've done at high water years now there's no way that fit yes fish species a specific species can go extinct but not all of them unless we destroy what they live in keep your head up about global warming and keep your damn water clean pick up your trash when you go fishing facts pick up your trash when you go fishing keep the damn water clean do not dump your beer do not urinate in the water just try and keep our waters clean people seriously we are surrounded by the biggest freshwater land mass water mass in the, in the freaking world we lose the great lakes it's over right. we lose some of our freshwater systems over like this shit dries up it's over for us anyway like it might not affect the rest of the world right away but for us in michigan it's over for pipe up in canada it's over up over Imagine being able to see 200 feet down to a cliff of an abyss that was the Lake Superior. It's over. Yeah, that's how it was for the fucking... But uh, as far as killing off species, it's not going to happen. They, that's why we have DNR regulations. That's why we have fish possession limits. That's why we have fish scale limits, the meaning of the size of which we can keep the fish at. We're also, what they have a, what's called slot limits, that you can keep a fish this size, but you can only keep... You can keep a couple of these, but you can only keep a fish this big one time that in that day. So, I call cap on that. Dinar, you guys, I love you, but I hate you at the same time. Keep doing what you're doing, regulating our fisheries, keeping the fisheries in check, trying to bring back and keeping native fish in check, as well as the, the fish that you we've become a bit technically invasive. I appreciate all that the DNR does. I'm not a DNR officer, but I do know DNR officers. But, um, but with that being said, there's no way that we can have a fish extinction all of all. Unless we keep... It's never, it's now, never now, happening. I'm going to go to the, com the commercial side of fishing. I do not like commercial fishermen. Get I like my charter people that do their local businesses and do the shit right. Commercial fishing is garbage. Yeah. Commercial fishing is why we have die-outs. Why we are ruining our ecosystems. Because they allow big, far uh, big farm fishing companies to drop what they call dip nets and harvest them in large scales and sell them to the big producers. Now what we do, we sell them to our local people. We sell them, to, we pay, have people to take fishing out. We take them out and they harvest them and they bring them home to their families. What they do, they put them in, throw them in big old freaking frozen vats of freezer and they sit around for a couple months. That's unhealthy. Yeah, it's it's good by what you call uh, the health, health department. Standards. No, the best time is within that first three months. You don't know when you go to a restaurant. You don't know if that fish that you just popped out of the deep fryer is fresh. Right. Sure don't. Anything I do, I always feed the freshest I can get. I love fresh perch. I love fresh walleye. We got to be invited to one of these motherfucking uh, springtime. Well, springtime. Well, well, we're gonna well, do well, walleye well, fest one. or whatever the fish mm, fish well, fry down. Well, fish fry me, down. It was Jose's. <laughs> for, for, my, <laughs> for my staff, it was Jose's holiday fish fry. Jose's holiday fish fry. But hey, yeah. we'll bring the drinks. Uh, we'll have to have it at an undisclosed location, then. Yeah, sounds fire. Undisclosed location to be determined. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Like as far as that goes, like the school and everything. Like 
in the fishing game. I know a lot about it. I know the social media sides. I know the ins and outs. And I just want to. I want to keep it rolling. Like I want to eventually do events where I can take kids. I can take special needs kids out fishing. To teach adults. I want to even go so far to it. I've, I met a, like a 69 year old man a couple months ago. And his name is Larry. Shout out to you, Larry. If you're gonna watch this, man, I'll send it to you. Me and my buddy Colin, the guy that does the, is coming up with his business, whatever charter company. We're not, we're not disclosing names on that one because it's not official yet. But he already knows what's coming for us. Yeah. Um, and we met this guy Larry. He's not from around here. He lives down by where he, my buddy Colin, lives, uh, Lansing area, whatever. But um, I met him. Me and him, me and him, and my buddy Colin shot shot the ship for like two hours, man. And we're, we're giving him our same phone numbers, talk about fishing. He, he's seven years old, almost seven years old. He can't fish with, on his boat no more. He can't do it. He can't navigate. He wanted to learn the shore fishing scene. He wanted to learn ice fishing. He seen that the ice fishing was coming up. I called him about two weeks ago before the ice fully set in, and then we lost it again, obviously. But I called him about two weeks ago, Larry. Hey, man, the ice is starting. You want to come mess around? Fiddle. He was the most devoted, happy old man that he caught something just by messing around in the local marina that I took him to because we just had the time of day. He drove up. He drove up here, picked me up, and I took him, and we went there. Had a blast, and Larry. Had a blast. Didn't you? you had a blast, didn't you? He, he was casting. Leave it in the fucking comment, Larry. How you? How, how was your time? <laughs> and what would you rate this man's ex, uh, experience? You give it a ten out of ten. And like, I never even like done anything like before. Like, like that's what I'm saying. It's great with old people. It's great with young people. I'm like, I want to take. Whether it be for, I don't want to take people out for money because I know like people learn and and like will learn how to provide for their families just by what I can show them. And I'm not I'm not saying I'm KVD. I'm not saying I'm a top dog in the fishing industry. I'm not making my own lures. I'm not I'm not making my own fishing merch. I'm not making. I wear Columbia PFG hats, but I'm about the PFG life. That's there performance no, fishing gear. But there ain't no limitless motivation without limitless no, Lopez. But we're gonna have like limitless lo, mo, pit, mo, bleh, limitless Lopez motivation. But we're gonna have limitless Lopez fishing, all kinds of stuff, man. And that's what's gonna be. He said merch coming soon. Say the yeah. fuck too. <laughs> but we're gonna have all that kind of stuff, you know. And for real, when it comes down to the brass tacks of like what we could, what we're gonna do with this, like I want to bring a whole new following to like giving to people, teaching them what I learned on my own. But I had a local community. I've, I've, I've met people all around the state of Michigan, from the Salmon Rivers to the Walleye Rivers to ice fishing. I know local. I know local charter people in Bay City. I know local charter people in other parts of the state. I follow big time YouTubers that are charter companies, and like there's a local guy. Like there's Kyle McCollum, XXL Double Pro Jason. Shout out to you guys, Fish Fray. You guys have taught me so much. Like if they ever get wind of this. I hope to see you guys somewhere on the water one day. Tag those motherfuckers in the comments. Fish Fray, there, and there's Double XL. There's Addicted Fishing out of Washington and Oregon. Like they do, they do big podcasts and stuff like that. I hope they see this too when I when one day. But I, I watch all these people and they do they do these like events where they bring people out on the water for free and and teach them how to what fish for steelhead, walleye, bluegill, like whatever you want, whatever they want their 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 forte is, you know. And I'd rather I. I've caught some of, just this year alone, I've caught some of the biggest fish of my life. From walleye to, to catfish to pike. From open water to ice fishing, you know? And I want to be able to see people, like, succeed in doing that. Like, because I have PBs now. I never used to have PBs. I have a PB best. What's a PB? Personal best. Meaning okay. your, your personal best, biggest overall of that species or your, your biggest fish. I've caught those just in 22, 22 alone. Damn. Like, the biggest of the big type shit a lot of people have seen it. it's on my instagram you yeah, guys follow me on I've instagram it's on my instagram like that's just this year past year 2022 and 22 22 was a big eye-opener for me but 2023 you're doing great things here what's for 23 it. what what is your uh what is your big goal for your not even a goal because you don't want to like label uh, it just as a goal but what do you think i don't is, make goals but i definitely make promises i definitely make fast tracks i definitely make a lane for myself narrow pat narrow out patterns and I don't look at goals because if you make a goal, you set some, you're setting yourself up for something, whether it be failure or, or just purpose or whatever you want to do with that goal. I don't make those because I live day by day. I don't look at forward to anything. I have no reason to look forward because I don't know what's up on me next. I don't look at it like that because I don't watch the clock no more. I don't even, most people I used to would watch me like, Jose, why are you always looking at the clock? Why are you worried about the time, man? Because I was just like caught up in it. 
when I'm at work nowadays, when I'm on my phone, I don't even know what time it is because I'm not caught up in time. That's her perception. Did you know that time was based off of something that was literally like put down by what civilizations, what God told us to do, whatever, what, whatever your fancy is of time. But if you really look at it, we have 365 days in a year, 24 hours, 52 weeks, all your minutes, whatever, seconds, nanoseconds. That was put by humans. That was based by humans. You look at the star, you look at the moon, the moon set, the moon phases, you come up and down, all that stuff, and sun goes up, sun goes down. The moon rises, the moon goes down. That's a perception of time. That's how people used to tell by looking at the sun, the moon, the stars, all that kind of stuff. Now, when we put it in digitalized, put it on a clock, that gave us something to focus on. It gave us our perception to watch. Don't watch that damn clock because you don't ever know when our life is over. You don't even know when the world's gonna explode. You don't know when the sun's gonna explode. You don't know. Right. Perception was based off of your mindset. Your time is based off of your mindset. You could li You see people in other countries and foreigners that are living 100 years old because they're not worried about time. They did everything in their younger years, whatever they did with their life, but those people who are living 100 plus years, they're not worried about time because they're old enough where they didn't have to worry about it anymore. They're ready to go when they're ready to go. And that's just me, man. I'm there's, ready to go there's whenever. A, there's, a, there's a bar by Peasy from Detroit. He says, you can buy a Rolex, but you'll never get the time back. Time is money, but guess what? If I don't you, wear a watch. Time's free. Exactly. You ain't strapped over watches. I barely even look at my phone clock. Unless the only reason I'm looking at my phone clock is to tell me where, what time it is to where I need to go next. Right. You know? But, or if I need, if I'm a little being a little slow at work or something. Oh man, I'm, I need to go on break now. I need to do this real quick. A lot of people who be wearing watches can't even read an analog clock. Exactly. Yeah. Why why have a why have a Rolly or a, a bus down or a VBS or something like that? When it doesn't even give you the numbers. They it's just mine. The they use their phones. They use they a still, yeah, you ask them the time. They, they still they, gonna pull out hey, their phone. What you see it's what just some of the rappers really... be doing nowadays? They'll have their bust downs and stuff right here, but they'll have an eye eye watch up here in their wrist. An Apple watch. An Apple watch. Oh, watch they'll there. pull it up right. You'll see them pull up their arm real quick. It's because they have the rollies and the bust downs, and then they have an Apple watch right here on their arm. Who does that? Come on. I haven't seen it, but it sounds I, I, pretty trendy. It's, I, I feel like I haven't seen that exact thing either, but if that, that, I did, I feel like I'd have to call them out, because that's right. ridiculous. Like, what are you doing? That's like, ridiculous. you got two, you look you got two rollies and a bus down. You look foolish. Just know the 12, the 1, the 2, 3, 4, and it goes all the fuck away around. Yes, and then exactly. The minutes, just Don't worry about the, the minutes. Why you got, if you gotta worry about minutes, and why the There's four dot. there's four little dashes in between each I've heard, one. They're I've minutes. Heard that, uh, Elon, no quarters. Elon Musk uh, schedules his days. In five minute increments. That's, That's ridiculous. Crazy. So he knows crazy. what he's doing every five. Minutes. That's crazy. I would I would hate to live like that because then you're you're basically come so set and you're like a robot. You, he's Elon Musk is yeah greatest greatest man in the world currently probably one of the best brightest minds of his age whatever. But you look at Elon Musk and what he's done for the world and what he hasn't done for the world and how he's using his time and what you're saying five minute increments. Right. Guess what? Man's losing time. My daughter fucking gets me five minutes fucking distracted left and right. That's what I'm saying. He's losing time. He's so focused on that five minutes every five minutes. But guess what? I ain't focused on none of that at all. Because I actually just watched this video. And I explained a couple of this. Like I said, how many hours in a, I'm going to ask both of you, everybody in all the audience, how many hours are in a day? 24. 24, but you can okay. work. You can work about, uh... Okay. We're going we're gonna to go around that. What? Yeah, yeah, 24, 24. Society, society has endowed us to work eight hours a day, correct? If you're not working eight hour days, then what are you doing? Or 10 hour days, 12 hour days. Right. Society's endowed us with that. If you're born, you tell you, oh, you want to work eight hours a day. Right. Nine to five. Nine to five. Whatever, 10 to, 10 to six. Whatever you do. However your fancy is for your work schedule. But society has also endowed us with, you're supposed to sleep eight hours a day. Right? Eight hours of sleep is essential. <laughs> Now, how many hours do you have left in your day now that you use 16 to sleep and work? You have another eight, right? Correct. So you're using two thirds of your life to sleep and work 
and you have one third to enjoy whatever the hell. You're not talking. And then we're then there's time for. I forgot that. I, I, I'd love for to get this video. I'd love to find the video again just so I can get it. No, for no random shit that you got to do. You know, but, um, your car needs repairs. You can't do that while you're at work or sleeping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you fucking need to find a place to live. You can't do that while you're at work or sleeping. Exactly. <laughs> like, now you're using two thirds of your life, and you only have the other one third to enjoy everything else and do everything else. Now. With that, sleep get, less. It's a sleep, sleep less. less. That's why I always like to chart. You get three. With that, you get, what's that? What's you get less time. Mean? You get sleep. It's sleep deprivation. Or you you know? get social. Now, society and and people have got so stuck into, I can't note this word for word because of, it was a video and it's still fresh in my head, kind of. But you only have that one third to do that. Now, it's sleep deprivation. They get you stuck in a loop of sleep deprivation. You're trying to grasp more while you're sleeping less. You're getting tired. You're getting exhausted. You're getting irritated. Now, don't be that person. You go over to a, a, a wealthy, rich person's house, somebody who's content with life, somebody who's done everything they want to do with life, has their home. Guess what? You know how we're up late, at 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, doing what we do, working, whatever. Rich people, people who are, are, are well off in their life and set. Now, it's a true fact. You go to their houses, like not rap artists, not like good businessmen, you know, people who are content with their life, did already traveling. You go to their house, Six, seven, eight o'clock at night. You go to knock on the door. Guess what? Either one or two, one or two things. Either their lights are off, or they're not home. You know why they're not home? Because they're spending their life with their family. They're doing what they want to do because they're very succeeding. You know why their lights are off? <coughs> because they're sleeping more than eight hours a day. Because they can do that. They're making money while they're sleeping. This is called passive income. Sleep deprivation. Don't let it rule anybody. Have a passive income. Find a way that you can make money without while you're sleeping. Have money. Find a way where you can make money to do and enjoy everything you do and make money at the same time while you're doing those things that you enjoy. Uh, I've already done that, people. I went. My job allowed me to do it two months last year. Went fishing, was paid for it. Loved that. Went went salmon fishing for 15 days. Loved that. Was paid to do it. Love that. You know, yeah. that's all what it's all about, man. Having the right people growing, keeping not watching the clock, just keeping it rolling. Be motivated, stay motivated, stay motivated. Be right by everybody you're around, too. You know, yeah. What is what is the biggest misconception? Of you? My biggest misconception right now, I feel like people find that I'm misunderstood. Like, I try a lot, I speak a lot, and some people, because of how I speak, how fast I speak. Because I'm not always thinking straight. That's why, obviously, I stutter. It's not my words. But they say when you stutter, you're actually, it's because your brain can't keep up with, your mouth can't keep up with your brain. You've got so much going on up here that it can't get it out of words all the time. But when you slow it down and actually speak clearly about it, you'll always be able to fluently put out what your message is, you know. But some people will find me misunderstood just because I speak too fast and they can't keep up. And I have too much knowledge that goes out and doesn't get understood correctly you know like i have a lot to say i always have a lot to say my whole horoscope of a gemini is based around being a chatterbox literally a chatterbox it's what they call gemini and they also have two personalities but i pick my better personality than anything one side i'm one-sided i'm not both sides i'm not intertwined with both sides of my what you would call gemini stage but uh it's definitely to stay true to your guns, spin with the wheels, roll with the wheels, don't let, rip the tires off, don't burn them, don't get burned, uh, don't be under, misunderstood, keep your message clear and correct, don't come at people incorrectly, you know, and I think that's what a lot of people, they want to see people that are coming out correctly, doing the right thing by everyone else, and people are seeing it, coming, doing their own thing. Like I've had people and friends that I've grown up over the years that I'm seeing now, and they're doing stuff with their lives, building houses, having still with the same girlfriends. This is just over Christmas, like right. having going to see old friends that there was their birthdays after Christmas, giving them gifts that they didn't even know I had to give them. You know, and I did this with a lot of people, like random person, random people, just giving them the gift, and I see their whole expression change because they didn't even know it, would, it could have been something personal of mine. You know, I, I, I did this all off the top of my head, and, it, and I ran with it. I, no, I, let's rephrase that. I sprinted with it. I was doing wind sprints all day long, trying to get everybody what they needed because I felt like it was right. That's dope. 
I, I, I for a while went. My, me and my, like you said, we were diving head first in this, and we definitely dive. Light worker, you're a light worker, man. It's, it's keep keep doing it. Keep fucking. I, I do a lot with it without even a mental note. Like it's it, it's almost effortless. I'm very, as what some would call it, self enlightened. I read a lot. I do my own research on my own. I watch a lot of videos. I pay attention. Being that sponge. Oh yeah. Being that sponge. Hey, episode one forty four, y'all. Yeah. Limitless Lopez four twenty. You said you're gonna be having some merch this year. Hey, we can we'll definitely we'll figure it out. We'll yeah, definitely make sure it, it happens. We'll definitely make sure it happens. Especially when the fishing brand gets collab. Yeah, we can uh, we can come get up all, with a dope logo. The, we can do all that shit. Get all the people in the right guy. I know <laughs> the pe we know the people. We all know the people. We gotta gather our heads. I know the right people. We know the right people. We got the following. Hell yeah. Yeah, man, uh, I want to say, you know, we uh, we talked about, you know, depression. You know, one thing I'm always, you know, big on is uh, always touching on depression. And uh, the 22 challenge is an active challenge that, you know, I, I try to do every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, you ever heard of it? No, I haven't, but I, I, I have been in states of depression. But like I said, I, I know how to really cancel out my voices, my demons level level with them kind of making everything quiet, know how to, what the world sounds like is quiet because I've been in the woods when there's no, no sounds, nothing, but you can hear a freaking knock on the tree somewhere. Yeah. You know, canceling out depression definitely has become a big part of me because I always try and stay positive. Let's stay positive. De depression is your own perspective of it. Yeah. What it brings you down, what, what can also motivate you. Yeah, the 22 a day basically, uh, so it's the hashtag 22 challenge for vets. Basically, it's, uh, you know, active duty service members and veterans, mm -hmm. you know, 22 mm -hmm. of them commit suicide every day. Mm -hmm. So that number, you know, is, is too damn high. So we, you know, we raise awareness and, you know, bring attention to it. It's great. Um, both my grandfather and co-workers now, uh, my grandfather was a retired and decorated naval officer. He's a naval mechanic. He's passed away. God bless. Rest in peace, Grandpa. Um, I have uh, my boss's husband. He's a retired Air Force and a couple other people I've worked with are military and I respect every person that puts their hands on and knees on it and feet, toes, everything down to protect our country, you know, and I get that. Like people who come out of the military aren't always right and very depressed, have PTSD, all that kind of stuff. And you can have, you get PTSD just from your own tracks of life, you know, don't be, but don't, you can't let PTSD, you can't let a lot of those things that doctor diagnose you would say that you got bipolar you got ADHD you got ADD that's only because they say so that's only because if you give signs of this that or the other don't believe none of that shit you are who you are because of how you are you know but I also don't, don't don't refuse medical advice that yeah. fucking says yeah, that Lyme disease and, that and you shouldn't be driving and you're a fucking <laughs> you're a Lyme mental head case you're a fucking mental I'm head not case crazy. I'm not crazy everyone that's else crazy. Crazy. that Lyme disease is fucking up people take the medical advice when you need it yeah, that, uh, they definitely have insurance too because that's just not cheap. But yeah, definitely, uh, we're definitely gonna make sure we, uh, you know, assist you in you know any way we can. I'm excited. I'm excited to you know I'm cook sorry. up some promo for this bad boy. Or maybe even some music down the road. Yeah, yeah, that'd be lit. Always. This is the guy to fucking go to. Always. He's got studio Always. session deals and fucking yeah. engineering deals. And oh, yeah, it's lit. Actually, doing. I'm, uh, I'm talking with vocals. You know, I know people too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Little three. Uh, you know, you some. You know the same people I know. So. Yeah, we know a lot of the same people. Yeah. But, all right, man. Hey, I gotta make sure to work. Hey, the grind continues. He's not fucking done, as you I see. I got 15 minutes to work, go to work. The episode 144, Feeling Good Podcast, the podcast your brain wants. Go subscribe, y'all.